Hey, what's going on? It's Friday the 13th, the spooky Friday the 13th edition Ooh. of Tone Talk. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, spooky. Where's your mask, Dave? <laughs> I know, right? I should. I, I didn't have a mask, so. <laughs> but that would have been good. Yeah, I, I've always been a fan of Friday the 13th movies and horror movies from back in the day. I was born on Friday the 13th. Where are you? Yeah. Wow. So it's a good luck day for me. Your middle name's Jason. <laughs> no. Okay. Oh man. So I hope everybody's doing good. Uh want to thank Billy Morrison who came on last show. Billy was fantastic. Hey, he's ple- just a lovely guy. Yeah, re- that's a great way to describe him. Lovely guy. Really nice. Um, we're gonna have, we're gonna have, although I don't think Mark knows this yet. We're going to have Justin Hawkins on the show at some point in time soon. Oh, you mentioned that to me. Yeah. You did. I saw you guys saw him in concert. Yes. Yes. What a lovely guy. Both he and his brother are awesome. Awesome. Well, that's cool. Awesome individuals. We hung out for a really long time after after the show. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't know how long. A couple of hours maybe after the show. Wow. You know, I... I I have to get back into listening to them. I tried to give them a shot a while back. Oh man, they were so good live. It was off. That's what I hear. I hear they're amazing. It was live. like what rock and roll guitar was supposed to be. You know, it, it loud guitars, loud guitars, slightly buried vocals. Just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. that's like that's the way you like here. Loud guitars, exactly. That's your loud, song. loud Marshall esque sort of guitars. Good deal. Oh man! So before we get started with questions and stuff, um, guys, make sure sure you check out Sweetwater.com. But use our link, which is in our description of our videos. If you use that Sweetwater link, it's an affiliate link. We get a little kickback. It helps out the show. Doesn't cost you anything extra. Um, right now it's recording, uh, recording month at Sweetwater. So check out what's going on there and, uh, go buy yourself a mic. Yes. Like great guitar, mic. the, uh, so, so, Soyuz 1973. I think it's pronounced Soyuz. Soyuz. Yeah. You were telling me about that, Mike. 1973, Mike. Uh, it's, it's not like, you know, it's Actually, not like a, it's a price of a 57, but Man, does it sound good. I mean, like, you know, Pete, Pete Thorne, had, when he was at Sweetwater, had done that uh, mic shootout thing, and it's in that. And he liked it so much, his video sold him a mic. So he bought it that day <laughs> when he was there. That's funny. <laughs> because my own video sold me something. He's like, all right, well, I got to get this thing now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, he, and he's used it in a bunch of videos since, uh, the, and he loves it. So. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. I'll have to check it out. Um, so yeah, also check out Sweetwater, Sweetwater, and then check out Fix Pedal Do- Fix Pedal Boards. I can't talk. Fix Pedal Boards uh, Check out their site. All the stuff that he, Tim has. There's a new website coming for them. I've heard in the grapevine. So eventually, it will be a really nice website with all sorts of new stuff and things coming. Great place for your, you know, pedal board lifts and your bridges and your different things to build a pedal board with uh, your junction boxes. I use those all the time. And he has a drawer for the rack rack drawer. If you're going to build a, a rack at home, I designed that one. And uh, yeah, go get I, need them. To get that. I actually really need to get one of those for my, uh, my rack. Um, so yeah. And then also Tomon. Make sure you guys check out Tomon. They're a sponsor of the show as well for all our European, European customers, our friends over in Europe. Yes. Uh, so please don't forget to use the links. If you're going to buy something from them anyway, please use the links. It helps yes. us out a lot. And hey, while we're at it, subscribe, please. <laughs> if yeah. you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Absolutely. Please do that. Um, click the bell. You'll get the notifications or you can check us out on facebook tone talk page or instagram mark tone talk uh you know so check them all out and also in uh, twitter i don't know what the uh twitter handle is but look up tone talk you'll see it 
<laughs> you use that a lot, do you? No, I don't use Twitter or X or whatever the hell it's called anymore. Um, I, I, I had to get off that. I told Dina, I said, I, I, I'm, you do the promos for Twitter. I can't stand that place. <laughs> I hate it. Um, oh, by the way, I wanted to thank Mario for the, uh, doing the graphics for us. Uh, Mario has been doing some awesome graphics, uh, as a help to us. Cause he, he's much better than I am when it comes to build, doing these promos and stuff, these th thumbnails. So thanks, Mario. I thank you, Mario. That. Yep. All right, so we've got questions for you, Dave. It's not oh, like boy. You, you haven't been getting. Doing I've that been brutally day. punished by questions for the last couple of weeks. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just brutally. <laughs> Is it because of the IRX coming yes, up? Yes, yes, hmm. yes. It it for sure is. Uh, you know, but that's okay. That's what I'm here for. Punish me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the thing that I learned from watching videos and looking at comments and, and things, even from when we did our launch video or the reveal video, um, not a lot of people are used to dealing with a preamp and knowing what to do with it, um, it seems. And, uh, and then also when you combine IRs and things like that, then... I don't know if they're used to dealing with anything. <laughs> <laughs> no uh you know here's one thing uh that i'll say about the irx uh, uh please if you go to our before you ask me please go to our website watch the videos watch the tutorial videos there's three or four tutorial videos that michael nielsen did on kind of every aspect of how it hooks up how to store how to do everything watch those it's valuable information. It's there. It's on our website. The links for the tutorial videos are on the website. No, nowhere else. They're not listed on YouTube. Well, that's they're on YouTube, but they're they're on the website. Cool. Good to know. So yeah. So yeah. That's definitely um, step one. Yeah. <laughs> step one. Any news when Dave's vintage series of amps will come out? Hi, Mark. How are you? You know, Mark? Uh, I know Mark, yeah. Uh, 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 probably, well, I mean, the Plexi is done, other than some cosmetics, but parts aren't ordered and boards aren't made. And uh, so probably sometime in the beginning of the year. Okay. But we're, we hope, I hope to launch, we'll see, both uh, the Vox style amp and the Plexi at the same time. Oh, that's good. I think. Perfect. Like a line. You're launching a line, so to speak. Right. Oh, we've got people in from Australia. What's up, John? Hello. L. Scott Music. How are you? Michael Torin. Are you back, back home, Michael, or are you still on the road? Uh, Simon Hosford. What's going on, Simon? And Dan Pfeiffer. We got all the uh, usual suspects. What's up, guys? Appreciate they apparently have nothing better to do than come watch us. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> I do. Um, let's see. How do you spend your Friday night? I listen to a bunch of guys talk about shit. <laughs> <laughs> bunch of talk, talk about guitars. I actually watched an episode that I really enjoyed the, uh, yesterday of i don't know if you you like watches dave like you know high-end watches or anything. i do somewhat i, I kind of like vintage watches although i mm -hmm. don't really wear them but i really like old sort of you know bubble glass vintage style watches high-end watches and stuff yeah sure yeah so it was john mayer who is a known vintage watch hound and uh ed sheeran and, oh, yeah. and just talking about their watch collections and showing their watch collections. And, oh, wow. And talk. Yeah. And, and we're talking big money, you know, but but it was it was really enjoyable. It was fun to watch. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. It's a cool show. Uh, we've got a 
Question from Matt Johnson. Hey, Dave and Mark. Hey, man. I have a question on the Dirty Shirley. Which branch of 5881s do you feel work best in one, especially the combo version? Branch of 5881s. That's an Brand, interesting way to put it. Brand, I think. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, if you're not going to use this, what was originally intended, which was the Sovtech 5881 wafer base, um then you can use any 6L6. And at this point, hmm, maybe a JJ6L6 in it. Not a lot of choices right now. Hmm. There is a large bottle PS vein, what they call a 50 date, 5881. We've been using those. They sound really good. But uh, we call it a 6L6, boutique-branded version of it. Hmm. But, uh, and then their 6L6 is short. It's interesting. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So you rebrand it as a uh, 6L6 when they sell it as a 5881? Well, yeah. So so originally, their their tubes came with a short bottle 6L6. Not like the normal tall bottle 6L6 that you would see, like a JJ is or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the tall bottle that looked like the normal 6L6, they branded as a 5881. We flipped the we flipped the branding on it. Right. Um, I don't I don't think it really makes a difference. <laughs> right. Uh. So. So yeah, you know what sounds really good too in the Dirty Shirley, to be honest, is EL34s. So uh, that can be really cool, too. Can you do that in the... Um, no, I guess you can in the... Uh, you have to read bias, but... No, in the Little Sister. It can. It has to be uh, EL84s 80, in the Little Sister, right? Yes, 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 yes. You can't swap anything there. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, Dave, from Steve V, do you prefer tube or solid-state stereo power amp? Trying to decide between a Fryat LX2 or an Avatone CLA100, mainly for wet, dry, wet setup. I got to tell you, man, that that um, CLA100 sounds amazing. Really? It was really well done, and it sounds great. Uh, not it. to discount the LX2. The LX2 is a great power amp, but um, the CLA100 for wet, dry, wet is amazing. Hmm. Uh, it just sounds really good. I mean, I even tried it with, you know, like the IRX preamp and just listened to it that way and see what it, how it sounded. And it was punchy and it was bright enough and it wasn't dark or cloudy sounding. It was like, it just sounded really good to me. Well, so that cool. whole line, they have bigger ones too. They have two space ones that I think are the 200 or 300 and one bigger than that even too. So, hmm. But I mean, like for... The CLA 100 would be fine for most people. Single rack space, no fan. And it's two, two channel. Two channel, yeah. It's like 100 watts a side into probably 4 ohms, but it's still loud into 16 ohms. Mm. So, you know, I had, um, for my wet, dry, wet setup, I had, I was using the MOS valve. Yeah. But then one of the channels died. Mm -hmm. So I threw that, I swapped. I threw the MOS valve into my rack and took out the Synergy 5050 and put that into my wet dry wet. Oh, cool. So that sounds fantastic also, which is, the, you know, same as a Fryat um, or similar to yeah. the Fryat. So you can't go wrong with either. But yeah, I haven't tried the Avatone. I'll have to check that out. I need to That's get another great. power amp. I, I definitely need another power, power amp. Um, definitely cool. Yeah, because I'd like to bring like just a a little rack rig when I go to play with the band sometimes, like as a choice. Just be like, sure, you know, that'd be cool to, to do. Uh, Stephen Douglas, what's going on? Michael Myers was the best. Yeah, but not on Friday the Thirteenth, man. Um, you know, that's uh, that's Halloween. But yeah, I agree with you. I, I out of the two villains, I like Michael Myers better. <laughs> if we're gonna go down that geeky road. Yes, I would say I would say so. Also, 
And uh, and I gotta say, man, the Rob Zombie versions of those movies were f- wicked. Hey, Amanda, good to see you. I agree. Uh, that I'm Rob Zombie evil. Version, that Rob Zombie thing where he did the whole backstory on yeah. the kid, on uh, Michael Myers. Yeah, was fantastic in the home yeah. life. It really, yeah, it was chilling. It really was. It was like wow, like okay. And uh, Donald Sutherland was the doctor. Yeah. And, yeah. No, that, it, was, it was particularly great. I, it almost is better than the original, which is yeah. almost, it's so crazy to say. Yeah. He did, but, a, he did a fantastic job. He did. I wish he would have done as good of a job on the Munsters. Mm. Almost unwatchable. Really? <laughs> and I like all his movies generally. I liked all the other ones, you know, Devil's Rejects and all that things. But uh, yeah, I don't. I was just like watching the monsters going, what happened? <laughs> I'm not sure what happened here. Wow. That's funny. Yeah. I didn't watch it. I never saw it. So that's okay. You're not missing anything. Yeah. What's it on? What was it on? Was it a movie or a series? It was a series. No, right? it was a movie. Really? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Huh. Uh, cardboard. What's going on, man? Thanks for the super chat. This is just to say thanks to Dave for his patience and emails and amazing customer service. He's a legend. Thank you. See, that's got to feel good after a long time. I try. Week. After getting killed with questions, that's got to feel good. <laughs> um, cheers, Roscoe. Even though this is making my lips look completely red. I'll keep I, think, I think I need to do what I've decided in my head now is, is I think I need to do some videos um, talking about troubleshooting. Hmm. People do not know how to do it at all. They'll just blame something when it's not something. You know, it's just like they 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 need troubleshooting guidance. <laughs> A troubleshooting guidance video would be good. I, I mean, how do you even do that? It's so, so broad. Well, you can. You, I mean, I true. True, but there's some basic things. Like if you have a like, you know, something goes wrong. My amp, my amp's not working. My amp's not working. Okay, hold on a minute. Unplug everything from the amp. Plug a speaker cable into the cabinet. Plug your guitar straight into the amp with nothing in the loop, nothing anywhere else. Does the amp work now? Oh yeah, it works fine. Okay, it's not the amp. Right. There's there's some troubleshooting one on one right there. Right. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. That's just the ba- the basics, the real basics. Yeah. yeah. I mean, nine times out of ten, it has something to do with something you have plugged into the amp, a pedal board problem. The vast majority of pedal boards that aren't professionally made are just a nightmare of problems. Generally, you know, if you use solderless cables, there's a whole host of issues with those if you don't know how to make them properly if you tried to solder them yourself oh god no (laughs) (laughs) uh you know if you if some of the cables were old and they were patched in you know if it's been sitting in a dusty room forever and the pedal boards caked in dust all over the place dirty and everything connections get oxidized connections all of a sudden you know you wiggle a cable and it's making all sorts of noise and stuff that's because the jack is dirty it it needs to be cleaned it the end needs to be cleaned it needs to be you know sometimes switches on pedals will fail or partially fail and sometimes it's as easy as squirting a little tiny bit of contact cleaner down the 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 shaft of the of the switch from the top literally and it just gets in there and then all of a sudden it works fine and fixes the issue the same thing oxidized contacts dirty contacts things like that all of this stuff can you can lose signal Hmm. so well bad speaker cables bad input cables bad cables from the pedal board to the amp uh you know well, I can make I can make a thirty second, sixty second clips uh, for, our, <laughs> for our show of you of you just running through, uh, right? You know, but I mean, you can do that on the Friedman channel too. Um, so uh, let's see, Sonic Blue, nineteen twenty two. Thanks for the super chat. IRX into the return of a forty watt 
Dirty Shirley is magic. Thank oh, you. Oh, I Dave. bet. What's next? That power section is good in the Dirty Shirley. It sounds good. What's next? Well, plenty. You will see. <laughs> there is plans for other things. Well, I would say the IRX was a big success. Massive. Yeah. It sold out everywhere. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Miller, if you had to pick one bridge humbucker pickup for a Strat-style guitar for the rest of your life for hard rock music, what is your choice? Bridge humbucker for a Strat-style guitar. Okay. Uh, so... Um... I'm assuming, well, humbucker, okay. Uh, I would say a, well, one of two, maybe. I really love the new pickup that I just tried. That was the creme brulee from Rewind Pickups. That pickup amazing. sounds amazing. Yes, it's a killer pickup. Um, really cool, stringy, Van halen -y, actually, pretty much, very much so. Um. And the other pickup uh, that is slightly different, but also kind of ties it for me, is the uh, Motor City Second Degree Black Belt. I've always loved that pickup. Yeah, I've got that but one. This is a, these pickups are weaker, but not like vintagey. Uh, they're they're PAF ish output, but not PAF y sounding necessarily, not entirely. I think they they sound a little more muscular and a little more oof to them than some more vintage wound PAF y kind of things. I, I I like a weaker pickup, a stringier sounding pickup personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends for me. I mean, I go back and forth. Sometimes I'll use more of like a you know PAF style, you know, high lesser output, lower output. But then I'll go to like the Warren D Martini pickup, you know, and yeah. And play that and be like oh that's still sounds great you know so yeah. it's kind of like but but yeah I, uh for in terms of price i don't know what wade's charging these days for his pickups um rewind well, the rewind's probably double yeah it's probably it's expensive yeah but but definitely worth it it's really really good it yeah it's particularly very great high-end stuff now the, now the creme brulee i am talking is an uncovered one and it is also a wax potted one so that's that's how he did mine so that that's important to know hmm. okay they're not cheap though no no i think it's around, I think it's around 350 something so, like that yeah for the un, that's what he told me so mm, okay well you know he is doing he did a special i'm looking for it and now of course i can't find it when i want to talk about it he made a pickup for us to do as a giveaway which we were going to do for our 25th 25 000, but i just never had the time to do it um so we'll we're going to think of another day another event to uh do a giveaway and he made this it's basically all vintage parts oh that's cool yeah, which a pickup he said it would it would sell for well over fifteen hundred, seventeen hundred dollars based on all the vintage parts. And he said he couldn't think of a better audience to give away to than our audience. Yeah, those those ones that he does are crazy in price. Yeah. So he it's yeah. he's like it's the ultimate Van Halen pickup. And uh so I was like, that's amazing. So we'll think of a giveaway that we can do one day for for somebody. Um all right. All right. Let's see what's next here. Chip Davis. First time I've seen you guys live, but I think I've seen almost every show you've done. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks for the great guests and knowledge. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, Fender 1960 CS. Thank you. Hey, guys. Hope you're both doing well. Dave, th thanks so much for getting back to me on the specs of the Cali. So kind of you. You both rock. Awesome. Thanks. No problem. Are you still making Cali's? We're still making, yeah. We're still okay. making everything. Okay. Well, not no hose right now, but um, are you still making the um, the Les Paul style? I forget what you called them. Uh, uh, the, the um, Metro D, not currently. Yeah. Okay. No hose will be back shortly. Uh, Metro D is in limbo at the moment. Mm. Okay. 
That wasn't our best seller, actually. It's a great guitar, though, but it wasn't our I best. I thought seller. it was cool as shit. I really, I wanted really to, good. I wanted to get one in Lefty. Yeah, because I thought it was killer. It, it, it might come back. Uh, yeah, especially when we were talking to Kevin at Iconic, and he was showing off his Les Paul style. Oh yeah, those are amazing. Oh, oh those are beautiful too. Uh, Asheville guy, thank you. Hey, Dave and Mark, thanks for your time tonight. Thinking about two IRX and a stereo two power amp, what do you recommend? Would like something that can be in the studio and not have too much fan noise. Well, they don't have fan noise, right? So, uh, fan noise. Okay, that that's rough with a two power, power amp generally. Yeah, it's almost always fans. Um, why are you thinking two? I'm just curious. He's going to run it in stereo? And then why necessarily go into a power amp if you're using it in the studio? Just use IRs, direct. Um, I mean, you could. Uh, you could also maybe use the CLA power amp, which is not tube, but it sounds great. Hmm. Yeah, tell us more why, why you want to use two IRXs. I yeah. assume stereo, but... Well, I mean, you could, you could do that and you, for sure. And, you know, it'd be cool, but, um, just curious. I mean, if you just want to go stereo into a tube power amp, you can easily use the send of the unit. If you're not, you're not going to use the back end, just use the send of the unit and feed effects and then feed a stereo power amp. Let us know what you want to do on here, or please feel free to email me and talk to me about it. Friedmanamps at gmail.com. Awesome. It's almost Thanks. better, maybe, if you're going to talk at depth. Yeah. Yeah. And peace. Yes. Peace. That would be nice. Dan Pfeiffer. Uh, Good evening from Minnesota. Let's go for a four hour marathon tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not. Yeah, I don't know. I can't do that. Not on a Friday. Those were rough. I, I used to six years ago is a long time ago. I was younger. <laughs> I'll do I get four my, hours with, with a really good guest that wants to keep going. Yeah, I, I'll do it, but it's just it gets tiring. It's like wow. Um, I'm sure it'll be four hour show if you ever have Jake on again. Yeah, I'm sure. Dave, you stud. Saw the pics you posted on Instagram. You must have blown a lot of output transformers in your heyday. <laughs> yeah, man, you had long hair. How long did you always rock the long hair? Oh, yeah, up until, yeah, I mean, I don't remember when I first cut it off. Good for you. I tried in the 90s go, sometime. I don't know. I don't have the head for the hair, the, the hair line for long hair. I tried it and I just grew like a mullet. And I just could not get like the hair over my ears, and then this piece, like, kind of grew, grew, it just grew. And, it and went all, 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 you got to all those pictures were like uh, I was probably sixteen or seventeen years old. Wow! So really, those are, those are really early pictures. You look older though. I always did look older. Wow! Yeah. So from the time I was young, I looked older, and then there was a time when it kind of reversed itself. <laughs> right and then you started you look then you're younger yeah yeah well that's cool those are cool pictures um zaba wabo hey dave too lazy to pull the back panel off the amp what rectifier is in the twin sister recommend any new old stock rectifiers thank you for the irx best direct tone and feel i've ever had uh the it's a, a five ar4 or also known as a gz34 rectifier tube um I mean, I don't know if you want to necessarily spend for a vintage rectifier tube, but if you did, I mean, like an old Mullard one, but it's not really going to do much for the tone. It might last a lot longer, uh, but then again, you might spend a lot of money and it might fail too. So that's a crapshoot. Mm. Well, not really really do anything. It's not going to do anything for your tone. I was going to say, is it going to sound any better? No. Just okay. sound the same. So why do it? Reliability might be better. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, thanks, Zabba Wabo. Uh, George 
Stritter, what's going on? Hey guys, thanks for the very informative show. Dave, I just picked up a Marshall Major. I love the sound so far. Any thoughts or recommendations regarding this beast? Well, I'd say get an attenuator. Earplugs? Uh, you can't even <laughs> use an attenuator with that. It's too loud. It'll blow everything up. <laughs> uh, it's loud. It's loud. It's really loud. Uh, earplugs. <laughs> You couldn't even use them. You couldn't use like a, a power station for that. No, it'd blow it up. Really? No, I mean it's not rated. I mean it's a two hundred watt amp plus. Wow. It's the, uh, you, most things are not rated for that. They're rated for like a hundred watts, maybe one hundred fifty max. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I mean, you could probably do something with it, like with paralleling a couple reactive loads of some sort like let's say sirs sirs are safe up to like 150 watts if you parallel two of them uh on it so then set the amp at four ohms and put two in and just use the line out from one uh it might dis distribute the the load enough where you could you know do something with it hmm. wow or just play it just kill your neighbors yeah, kill your neighbors. Uh, well, not reality, not real. Don't really kill them, but <laughs> just kill them with noise. Uh, DL, any chance to get Uncle Doug on the show? I thought he would be very interesting to have. He isn't, hasn't he been on the show? Doug Rappaport? Is that who he's talking yeah, about? Yeah, Doug Rappaport's been on the show. Yeah. Uncle Doug, is that who he's referring to? I don't know who he's referring to. Okay. I assume it's Doug Rappaport, and he's been on the show a while ago. He might be referring to someone else. Mm. Okay. Uncle Doug. Oh, maybe he's uh, one of those YouTube YouTube guys. Yeah, maybe. I'm, that, uh, that actually sounds familiar. It does sound familiar to me, too. All right. Uh, now, now I got to look. Yeah. Look it up. Uncle Doug. I wrote it down. Wow, it's getting hot in here. I told the wife to put the air down. Uncle Doug. Oh. Uncle Doug has some amplifier restoration things of some sort on YouTube. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for the suggestion. Uh, Tobias Ryan, thank you. Scary question. I miss the squishy feel of my Mesa Mark V amp, which I sold. Is there any way I could justify buying a Mark VII? Any cool alternatives? Uh, a squishy feel of my Mark V. Should you buy a Mark VII? Do you know anything about those? Why don't you just buy a Mark V if you liked it? I'm sorry for stating the obvious, but I mean, you could buy a used Mark V. You know, if you if you really dug how it felt. Yeah, you can always buy another one. That's a good answer. Um, Plexico. Hey, Mark and Dave, did Fender license your amp IP for their Tone Master Pro? Anything you can share with us? Nope. But they didn't use our name either. What'd they say? Uh, I forgot what it said, but it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it alluded to our name, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, our name. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Basile to Tiffany, thank you. Am I crazy? Boss sounds better than Strymon. <sighs> um, well, that all sort of depends on what Strymon and what effect we're talking. I would say Strymon does reverbs better than Boss, considerably better. I would say Strymon does delays quite good. Um, but if you want more of the like SDE 3000 kind of delays, uh, that would be the Boss for sure. Um, now personally, uh, the modulation stuff I like from boss better. 
um you know all their classic things like their c2 and c1s and and things like that like the the mod factor pedal they have is 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 really good for a variety of things uh but like i said i mean striving for the reverbs are amazing uh also the trem that striving has the flint with the reverb combo trem that's amazing sounding so I suppose it depends on what style of delay sound you're going for with the delays. And if you want more um, sound design-y kind of delays, maybe uh, the Strymon is better. If you mm. if you want more, you know, vintage rack piece, maybe the Boss is better. The choruses, though, I definitely think Boss is better. Mm, yeah. So there's my opinion on it. Okay. Hey, did you see that new Benson delay? Uh, maybe in passing. Oh, well, they just did a video, JHS. It just came out. It's like this super analog sounding uh, digital delay, basically, from Benson. Uh, it's very yeah, I think I think I saw it in passing. I don't think I watched it. Yeah, check it out. It looks the very, last very thing I need is another fucking delay. I, I know. It, it looks cool, though. It's like, oh, God, another delay I need. Um, hey, Dave and Mark, I have a question for Dave about the Surreal Amp C Classic Modern. Is this the same circuit as the Aldrick mod? If you know the circuit of this amp, can you please let me know? Uh, I know Jerry at Surreal. I do not know what that amp is at all. So maybe it's the Aldrich mod. I'm not really positive. You'd have to ask him about it. Never had any experience with it. Jerry's a nice guy. Ask him. Okay. GC Fenix, thanks. Dave, your website states the BE50 as being the best amp you've ever made. Still accurate? If not, what's your new favorite? Love mine. Every new amp is the best amp I ever made. Um, at the time, it was. I mean, I... I I might like to be deluxe more. I might like the Jake amps more. I don't know. Uh, how you feel that day? It's like children. Which is your favorite child? That's tough. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Definitely. Uh, Dude Crush, looking for a clean pedal platform tube amp with EL34 tubes and effects loop. I'm interning, intending to set amp clean with no breakup, letting the pedals do the work. If so it's you, all clean, why do you want an effects loop? You don't need an effects loop if it's all clean. That's true. And you're going to be hard-pressed to find something all clean with EL34s. We used to make a, a clean amp uh, that was a great pedal platform called the Bucks and Betty. That had EL thirty fours. It was kind of a Fender based front end with a, a, a kind of British based back end, and you could probably still get them used. Um, really loud and clean worked amazing with pedals. So that that's an idea for you. Okay. You don't really need a loop though for uh, if the amp's already all clean really serves no purpose what's the um what are the tubes in the bravado 6l6s mm. bravado is a good a good amp pedal platform clean amp the wampler Brav bravado yeah that's what i was thinking as a good option but again 6l6 so uh here you go another Friedman customer service is the best in the business. Thank you, Dave. What are the differences between a Sin BE Deluxe and the IRX Core Tones from Sonic Blue? Thank you. Um, you know, to be honest, it's really the same. So the B Deluxe, uh, well, okay. Yeah, it's really the same. The BE Deluxe BE channel, uh, is the same as the channel two and the irx uh 
The HBE uh, is very similar uh, with the boost on on the IRX. And uh, on the IRX doesn't have a sat. Does sort of have a fat, so that's really the same. You'd be kind of hard pressed. They're not that much different than each other. Hmm. Okay. Just different format. Um, Hang on one sec. Yeah, no problem. I have to find Velcro. Velcro's super chat, and let me see if I can find that. Um, let's see. Here we go. As I scroll, keep scrolling away here. Uh, okay, I'm almost there. Yeah, uh, Velcro Roachman, you, did you send a question? I don't see it, man. Uh, but I do see your super chat, but I don't know what you're asking. So, sorry. Uh, Rob's Tone Zone. Dave, hope you got the Balvini I sent. Can you explain what C yes. B45 switch? Oh, you got the Balvini? I did get I did get that. Uh that's another bottle though, somewhere else. And then someone else gave me this bottle, but I think they gave it to me in person. I get confused after a while. But thank <laughs> you very much. That's awesome. Can you explain what the C45 switch and the SAT switches do on my BE100? Add or alter C45 sounds 800 ish and sat switch sounds Jose like to me. You got it. C45 is more 800 ish, not exactly, but more 800 ish. Uh, probably be relatively close uh, if you used the C45 on with one of the slightly lower gain structures to an 800, although it doesn't have. Uh, on the gain pot, it doesn't have the big bright cap an 800 has, uh, so it's slightly different. Uh, but yes, it's more 800-ish for sure, and the sat is kind of like this Jose saturation kind of diode thing. Not ex it, it's it's like partially like that, yeah. Hmm. Okay, you got it. You already knew. Uh, was the fat switch something that you came up with or is that something that I mean, already around? A mil it's just, it's just a changing one value of a capacitor. Okay. To pass more base in the front end. Well, what made you do that? Was it just basically a request? Well, if you, if you use, if you use, let's say you're using the gain kind of low on the amp, meaning like five, four mm. it starts to get a little like thin sounding so if you engage the fat switch at that point it brings back some fullness to the tone in the lower gain mode so oh, I that I, I, that works ideally for that i thought it was also good for like single coils uh could be good for single coils also sure yeah yeah okay. so will the voice switch on a b deluxe uh because it rolls some top end off and um so th there's there's a ton of different ways on the amp to to tailor the top end response mm. for your needs you know right i mean i had someone come in that bought a b100 deluxe and he was playing like a, a mike landau strat fender custom shop strat with a, a 12 gauge strings on it and you know you dialed in the amp differently for that guitar than you did you know a regular humbucker guitar for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But it's glorious. It can be glorious. Yeah. Uh Germano Moschini. Great name. Sounds uh Italian or is that Italian? Moschini. Could be. Naked Mosc production. Mosconi? Uh we just got some transformers in, so maybe I should they'll start eking out very slowly, shortly. Uh, as Ooh. far as the JJ, it doesn't have more gain than a BE Deluxe. I actually might have less. Um, 
really on a JJ, really, you have a BE channel or a BE esque channel and then a saturation with the JBE. So technically, a B Deluxe has an HBE stage, which is another gain stage stacked on top. And then still, people want more gain. Stop. Roll. Stop with the gain. Roll it back. Like, for instance, Jerry Cantrell uses two amps. One has his JBE setting on it. The other it doesn't. So it's like a BE channel. And both the gains are back at about six. So think of a BE channel at six on the gain. And then think of a BE with a saturation on. Also with the gain at six. That's as much gain as it gets mm -hmm. for him. With a relatively hot pickup. What pickup does he use? He uses a one made by Motor City. Oh, that's right. You're supposed to come out with his own uh, limited run of pickups with Wade. I don't know where that's at. Hmm. Um, hey, Dave and Mark. Dave, can you talk about your blonde bandmaster? I just got one. I'm in love with it. Thanks for all you do, guys. Uh, I mean, I bought it a while back because I, I don't know, I wanted it and I, uh, mine has the one with the harmonic tremolo in it. Uh, the tremolo sounds sort of like a univibe almost. It's also like chorusy. It's not just a, like a fender vibrato, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's really glorious sounding. What year is yours? I have no idea. Hmm. 60s? 60s. Yeah. Is it your birthday? Happy birthday, Friedman. Mm -mm. Okay. I didn't think so. Not my birthday until December 13th. I, maybe he thought because I said Friday the 13th was my birthday. Oh, I, I was born on Friday the 13th. Well, this Today is not, is not my birthday. December 13th would be my birthday. So. Thanks, though. I had a time. Write it down. Send him Balvini. <laughs> no, tequila. Okay. Uh, Daniel Greco. Hey, guys. Awesome as always. Wondering if there's any more work with Steve Vai on new Synergy or Amps in the Works. Not that I know of at the moment. Okay. Um, Peter Laces. Hey, Mark and Dave. Which pedal loop switcher are you guys liking the most these days gig rig music lab rjm got a new gig and need to prevent a potential sprained ankle playing live thanks <laughs> <laughs> uh you know what all that are mentioned are great switchers i judge a switcher on what your needs are so and what's going to work best for your particular needs so you know maybe it's an rjm maybe it's a music com or maybe it's a gig rig I, they're all quite good. The RJM seems like really for like touring, you know, like it's like high end stuff. It's like really yeah, the RJM stuff is high end. It's 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 great. Um, yeah, it's amazing. So music music comes great too. RJM probably has the best editor. Uh, the gig rig stuff's really really high quality. Great. It's hard to get though, right? Uh, <laughs> no, you can get it. You can get. Can it. you get the gig yeah. rig stuff? Yeah, now? yeah, yeah. Okay. Pretty sure you can. Yeah. So it really, I don't know if feel, Peter, feel free to email me about it, but you know, it's uh, sort of what do you need to do is how I look at it first. And then I figure out what the best choice is for switchers. Okay. Oh man. Velcro sent another one in. All we need to know is what you, <laughs> yeah. What do you, what are you trying to ask, bud? Um, and this is what is this like two dollars or <laughs> yeah I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what currency that is i don't know what that is uh, it, translates it could be twenty dollars could be two hundred dollars oh. could be just said dave thank you just got home to japan and two days later my ears still my ears stopped ringing do you know him oh i know who this is <laughs> yes yes i do raymond seymour oh okay Cool, man. Thank you. Enjoy. Play loud. 
John E. Dave, considering Van Halen's Destroyer is so sought after, why don't you make an Explorer style guitar with an ass body, maple neck with rosewood fretboard? I'm not so sure I can. I think I could be wrong, but I think there might be an issue with Gibson now. Well, they sue everybody. So. Yeah. But yeah, that would be kind of neat, wouldn't it? That's like, a good I don't question. Know. I'm not sure if that body is protected or not. I was going to say, is that because even bodies that I've seen that are close in that style, they alter it in some way. Did the Destroyer, I know it had, um, well, technically it was Japanese Senwood, uh, which is like Ash, but not quite the same. And did it have a maple neck? I don't think it had a maple neck. Uh, yeah, I could be wrong, a, though. I think it had a matching, the matching body wood, right? I, I'm not sure on the neck. I, I'll have to look at Pete's, hmm. which I'm not sure if it's here or not. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'll ask him. But yeah, I mean, here's what I don't understand. Why on earth hasn't Ibanez done it? Hmm. I don't get, I don't understand that at all. They should they should they should do that. Mm. Well, they were sued over it the first time. <laughs> were they? Well, that that it wasn't that why they got rid of them because they were the, the lawsuit era guitars, right? I don't know. That's a good question. Oh, see that's what I always thought. I thought that they were, you know, uh, when back when those Les Pauls and the destroyers that were being made, they were lawsuit. I know for sure that the uh, Les Pauls, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure, I'm not positive on the body shape of the Explorer mm. because there's other people making Explorers now. Well, Gibson makes an Explorer. Oh, I mean, there's other people than that too. There's a lot of high end people that are making them too. Mm. Okay. Um. Yeah, it seems like a a no brainer. <laughs> Someone for, should do it for Ibanez, right? Yeah. You just have to change the headstock. Do you? Well, it's, it's like a banana headstock. A banana headstock, yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe slightly different, but well, I think you do have to change the headstock because, well, no, I'm wrong. Because Cr that I was thinking Kramer with the Van Halen, like the fifty-one fifty they came out with. They had to change the headstock on their fifty-one fifty because they couldn't do a Kramer style headstock. So I don't but know. They wound up doing close to that. It's very close, but it's yeah. it's just shortened. It just looks a little stubby, basically. Oh. So paid attention to that, huh? Yeah, I'm a geek on the, that crap. <laughs> uh, let's see. Mad Max, free the tone versus boss EVH delay. Free the tone seems easier to use. Okay, the free of the tone is a great sounding delay for sure. Um the boss ones, it, okay, the free of the tone is easier to use, uh, but the boss one sounds like the SDE 3000. So both are excellent, though. So I have a free of the tone one that sits on my bench uh, in my power station that I use. Uh, I love how it sounds. Um, both are killer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love my, the EVH delay. Yeah, it sounds great. It is a little difficult. Yeah. Once you figure it out though, it, it gets easier. Yeah, there's some there's some weirdness and to the problem. I haven't figured it out because I haven't yeah. actually u used mine yet. I just use the presets because I don't try I don't want to mess with it. I'm just like <laughs> I got it in the wet dry wet. I use the pre I use edge presets, they all sound great. And I'm like, okay, I'm not messing with any any settings. If I want to mess with settings, then I'll go to another delay. <laughs> so there you go. Um this is an interesting question. Leonard uh, Nabonzi, can you explain the difference between treble and presence in simple terms, please? Okay, well, treble is in the EQ section of an amp. It's uh, e the EQ session section of an amp is passive. Um, uh, the presence is kind of a high frequency cut in the 
negative feedback loop or power section of an amplifier. Uh, okay, put it simply, presence, uh, at least uh, traditionally, presence is a much higher frequency. And when you turn it up, it's a very high frequency, like a, a 8K or above or something. And uh, probably 8K-ish. And then treble is much lower. It's, it's a, a little bit into the high mids. So, like, generally, you turn a presence up, it's like, and, like, the treble is more, like, just brighter. Mm -hmm. it, different frequencies. Maybe that's put as simple as I can explain it. Gotcha. But there's more to the presence in a, in a power amp, because as you turn it up, also, the power section gets a little more opened up and um, punchier, so to speak, or, or more, uh, you know. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. This is funny. Yeah, Ibanez is too busy naming their new products RGB. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it's that, that Ivan. Oh god, that's so <laughs> bad with the Ibanez ones. You know, and I always felt fault. Uh, I always have issues with the Marshall ones too. Uh, it's the forty one hundred Marshall. Oh god, what the fuck is the forty one hundred Marshall? Jesus! Right, just put a I, name I, on it. You know, I. You know. 2203, I got that one down. 2204, I got that one down. But like the the other oddball ones. You got the 1987. Yeah, I mean, uh, 19, yeah. 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 I, got I always have to go, wait a minute, you have what? And I have to look it up. The 2061. Oh, the 20 watt amp. Okay. Yeah. Um, That's funny. That's true, though. Um, yeah, I thought. Ibanez was sued, and they had to change the shape a little later. That's that's what I heard. Well, then make the later shape. That was still cool. It says, uh, let's see, Gordon. Yes, Ibanez got sued because the logo of the Ibanez looked like Gibson logo with the same headstock. Uh, so make the, so make the same guitar with a slightly later shape with a slightly different headstock. Big fucking deal. <laughs> So no, uh, it's like a no-brainer as far as I, I go. I mean, make yeah, make it. EVA should do it. You know, make it affordable. John DeShane, Dave, thanks for all for for all the getting me going with the IRX. I assume for white dry wet DI box arrives Monday. We'll send you clip. Good. I hope those DI boxes work. <laughs> <laughs> no, they should. They should work. I've used them before for other applications, but uh, those are like uh, cool little Samson ones that should work fine for the application. Any chance John Sir will be coming back? Yeah, we're going to have him on again. Just, you know, spacing it out, you know. But yeah, we'd like to have him on again. Sure. Um, I've got a Pete Thorne guitar on the way from him. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered it. I ordered it a year ago, uh, over a year ago. Yeah. So I think it's going to come at the end of the year. So cool. Yep. Uh, okay. Let's see. Mark, Mark has the corner on all the left-handed guitars. <laughs> I actually, I've, I've sold some guitars recently. Ah, I may, I, I'd let go of a few things. So I sold my Charvel. Um, I sold my white striped 78 oh, Van Halen yeah. guitar. Uh, I hated the neck on it, so I was just like, fuck it, I'll get rid of that. So yeah, I sold a few things here and there. Um, and I sold both my fuzz pedals. I sold my Analog Man, uh, what do you call it? The What's it called? The uh, not sun, a sun Face? Mm -hmm. And then I sold the R2R pedal. Okay. Which was the... Uh, Super Fuzz Mark II. I just figured they're just sitting there. I never use them. Yeah. You know, like they're great. They're awesome stuff, but I have to sell more stuff too. We should do another selling show. Oh, and then everyone will complain that they don't like the show because we're selling stuff. <laughs> Who cares? You know how many people loved it that we sold stuff on the show? I, no, I thought it was really good. I thought it was great. Um, you know, um, 
yeah i have some stuff for sure we should do it yeah let's let's plan it definitely uh jackson makes an explorer called the fury oh i've seen that before yes and ibis stills make destroyers they're all shaped a bit differently to avoid lawsuits really i've never seen ibis ibis destroyers really new ones hmm yeah that's interesting I have never seen a new Ibanez destroyer. Maybe I'm wrong. Could be. Hector definitely makes one. Uh, oh, yeah. hmm. There are some cool ones that are used. Yeah, I don't see anything new. Oh, one for eleven thousand dollars. Jesus Christ. You know yeah. who made cool explorers too were, were Hamer. Yes, they did. Hamer were really nice, too. Oh, wait. Hang on, Sweetwater. Ibanez Destroyer. No, it says out of stock. DT520FM. So, no, I don't know what they're making anymore. Mm. Maybe, yeah, but it did have a little notch in the headstock. I mean, in the uh, in the body. It, yeah. So, but I don't, I don't know if they make them anymore. And there's some cool <laughs> bad idea to look. Yeah, <laughs> bad idea. Let me, let me go away now. Let me, sorry. Let me come back to you guys. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have a Gibson Explorers. And bad I, idea I, to look. I I love it. Um, how about Nigel Tufnell on the show? I'd love to have Nigel. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, yes, Dave. I always thought the Metro D was cool. Me too. Yeah, I love great. I love the 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 neck heel and yeah, everything was great. Um, time to buy a Friedman fuzz face. <laughs> uh, let's see what other super chats we got here. No, I think we're 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 all caught up. So let's see what else we got. We're caught up. Amazing. Yeah, we're caught up on super chats. Uh, What do you guys? Oh, I love it. What do you guys think of the Digitech Freakout pedal? Oh, it's cool. Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, great for not, feedback and you know. Yeah, if you're not playing loud, you want to get kind of that Ebo effect or some good feedback sound. Yeah, it works great. I mean, I put it in a lot of rigs over time, and it's always been neat. Yeah, that's one of those pedals. Like, that's a never sell. Actually, pedal. this in this day and age with people going mostly direct. Mm -hmm. Definitely, if you want to get a little feedback. You know who wasn't direct? The darkness. No. Oh, they were. They weren't direct. No, they were not oh, okay. direct. They were loud. They were. They, they were, were loud the rock and roll guitar sounds. So I, I saw them recently. Justin Hawkins is a Friedman artist. Two Friedman amps live. So, well, we got to get him on next month. Yeah, I have to. I just got to send him an email, figure out when because he's touring right now, and it might be better when he finishes. Okay. Uh, and I know he's in the U.S. right now. I don't know if he'd want to do it while he's on tour. He's in the U.S. right now, and then uh, he goes to some shows in Europe, and then uh, might be back home then. I got to say, I'm really surprised in going through the chat that not one person has commented about my lighting. <laughs> <laughs> I was quite proud. Not one person has said, hey, Mark, nice looking lights or anything. Yeah, now, now I, I was thinking that, you know, he's doing a better job than me now. So <laughs> I used to look good, but not now. <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> that's so funny. You look fine. Uh, Dean, Z Dean Zelensky would be a cool guest for the show. Yeah. Sure. I've I've liked his some of his USA models that they've they made. Oh yeah. He always did cool, neat guitars. Yeah. A cardboard said my B one hundred deluxe arrived yesterday. Brutal. Awesome. Play it loud. Mark, please have Bjorn Jewel on again. He's got so much new stuff, his incredible man needs to be questioned. He has so much information. Yeah, 
Bjorn was cool. Um, can you explain, Dave, can you explain the SAG control on the SIN 2 is actually doing? Sagging the high voltage. So you really, if you're going to use it, you really, uh, it's really more suited for semi broken up tones, like something that is going to be cleaner, that's going to kind of, that you're going to smack kind of hard with a humbucker. And then you only want it to just blink a little. And then you get a, a nice feel from it. Uh, it's not something you want on massively all the time or anything. You just want it a little bit when you really smack the guitar. And it basically simulates the sag of an amplifier when you really smack it hard. Hmm. So that's that's that. Synergy customer service. <laughs> but that's okay. I was doing synergy customer service earlier today <laughs> with someone. Were you really? Yeah. He's like, I don't know if you can help me, but they, they're not getting back to me. <laughs> I'm like, what is it? Let me know. I can probably help you. There you go. Uh, let's see. Hey, David Mark, great show. Have you ever hear a Lado or Lado guitars from Canada? I've not. Yes, but it's not. Lado, uh, Lado? Is it not Lado? It's. Yes, I know. I know the guitar company you're talking about. Uh, they they started a long time ago. Um, I remember them at, having some at making music back in the early '90s. Hmm. Yeah. The only other ca Canada guitar that I know of is um, Seagull. See, I don't even know what that is. Never heard of Seagull guitars? No. It's a Canadian acoustic mm. manufacturer. They make now I learned something. Yeah, nice acoustics from Canada. Um, Chris, what do you think of the new Fender Tone Master Pro? I have. I Wait have a not minute. Wait a minute. What? I love this. This was great. So, Joey Wilder, <laughs> Sir Davis Friedman, Dark Lord of the Guitar Underworld, reigning high from the Tone Kingdom. Greetings from hell. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Sometimes Stop. you just read things and you're like, wait a minute, stop. We got to say this. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Thanks. I have not played the Fender Tone Master Pro. I've heard. Do you really think it sounds good? The videos I saw didn't sound that great to me, but I could be crazy. Or I mean, it, it looks like the interface is really nice and touch screen and that's cool and it looks like they thought of a lot of stuff but i was like mm, mm, i was i've heard better out of neural and and stuff you know yeah i i have to be honest and say i didn't really listen to a lot of videos on it so i saw, I saw a few i watched a few that were you know informative and good and but but i was like so where's the great sound hmm. mm, yeah i don't know I don't know. I don't know yet. I really just don't know. Yeah. So, you know. Until you have it in the room, right? Yeah. But I mean, I think the layout and how it's mm, I love the touch screen. It's very similar how the neural has a touch screen and stuff. It just makes life easy. Yeah, that's for sure. It's a lot easier than scrolling through menus and shit. Yeah. Um Hey, Mark and Dave, I was sad that Grover Jackson never talked about the amazing Kelly guitar. Do you know the story behind it? I don't know that. I don't know anything about it. The amazing Kelly guitar. Don't, don't know what that is. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Mark Lanes, thanks for answering my question earlier, Dave. Is there any pedal out there that can replicate the infamous Sunset Sound echo chamber? There's a plug-in that does it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, probably not exactly. Um, but there's some nice plate reverbs that that work well for that kind of thing. You know, I used to really like the um, plate reverb on the um, Digitech uh, Polara reverb. 
I thought that did a really nice plate reverb sound for sort of that Van Halen-y kind of thing. You can also get a cool one out of this Strymon um, Flint. I think, I think the reverbs in that are kind of neat for that kind of thing. Which was the Digitech that you said? The Polara? The Polara, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we remember we single-handedly drove them yeah. right up. I remember that. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> Jerry, Dave, any plans still to do a PQ3 bass pedal? Oh, I do have a prototype of a, um, I don't know what it's going to be called, but shall we say it's a buxom metric. So it's like a buxom boost, but with a full parametric midsection. So that's pretty cool. So you awesome. can select your frequency that is boosting, boost right. cut, and and then if broader, narrow, so to, so to speak. Right. It's really good. Eventually, I will probably release that. I don't. It might not be called a buxom. It might be something totally else. Something else it might have a totally different look. I don't know. Anything I do next with pedals will be different vibe and a different look different thing change it up yeah cool question for you both from zaba wabo favorite univibe doesn't have to be current production thanks mine first would be uh voodoo lab micro vibe it is great i worked on that with them years ago um it it, it can be great um and it works well with distortion so it's not quite as murky as a traditional univibe um if you want more of a traditional univibe that was a latter like early 90s there was the prescription univibes which were done by bob sweet um for prescription electronics so bob sweet did the board he later did sweet sound uh univibes and both those people are dead now, hmm. unfortunately. Um, the um, something newer that's great is the um, Vibe Machine um, by which escapes me. Uh, hang on, I have one. Also. Vibe Dry Bell Vibe Machine. Oh, that's uh, a good one. Dry Bell Vibe Machine is a great, really small format Univibe. It sounds really good. I'm kind of picky about the vibes. I, I, like, I like that one a lot for a new one. Yeah, um, I, have you tried this one, the J Rocket Univerb? No, I haven't. Yeah, I got that, and it's actually really good too. Yeah. It's it's really all about how the pulse is on a Univibe. A Univibe is not an even pulse, so if it's evenly going back and forth, it's not how it should be. It's more like a hing yang, hing yang, hing yang. It's it's a just like a slingshotty kind of effect. Uh and 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 that's not always um done, <laughs> so to speak. Right. Been some Univibe clones. It's been a while since I I mean from a price you can't beat the micro vibe from a price perspective. And the micro vibes uh is awesome and it does have the proper pulse and it it, it does it, the nice thing about that one is it's not all a transistor circuit so it's not quite as murky so if you're going to use it into like higher gain things it works really well so don't forget about that one that one's good does does he still make that is that still in production i'm not actually sure yeah i'm not sure either not sure either um we should have josh back on the show i had i had prototypes of a friedman vibe I still have three or four of them. Really? Mm hmm. Just never decided not to do it? Well, there's issues with doing Univibes. Univibes uh, for the photo cells, for Rojas compliance, and there's a whole bunch of weirdness with it. I gotcha. Uh, Jared Ray, I received my gel 20 from Sweetwater yesterday, and it's awesome. Thanks for bringing it back, not only without compromise, but with extra features. Yeah, man. Maybe there'll be more things in the future. 
cool. What's he talking about extra features? Uh, the saturation switch was added. Oh. That wasn't on the original amp. Oh, it wasn't on the original amp, the 100. Mm-hmm. No, I, no, no, I got no. you. Right, so, okay. I'm like, what am I missing? <laughs> <laughs> what don't I know about? I right. Why, <laughs> why am I missing that? I have one. I just didn't <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> uh bass boomer chad bear what's going on love the show dave huge fan of your amps i grew up listening to all the rockers of the 80s and your amps nail the tones and feel that i've been chasing for decades keep up the great work thanks man enjoy i cannot disagree with him uh i see jason tong is in the chat hey jason what's up man i think in order to keep jason's interest we got to start talking about uh capacitors should just send him a link and invite him on. You want me to do that? Jason, you want to join? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't care. Did he That's say? I, I, well, not yet. He didn't say, but that was. All wait right. Tell that, him. Wait a minute. That was a while ago, so I don't know if he's still listening or not. Oh, okay. Well, uh, monitor it and see if he is. There's too many. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Jason, that, J- Jason, if you're still listening, wa- message me on Facebook and let me know you're around. I'll yeah, we'll you. invite you on real quick. You do this with me all the time. <laughs> we can yeah. do. We can reciprocate. Let me see. I'll send him a message right now. Yeah, we can reciprocate. Why not? Oh, what do we got here? Darkness, Justin. Darkness using. Okay. Uh, uh, well, Justin has a B100 Deluxe. Apparently, he used it all on the previous tour to this one and this one now. And he now also has a small box amplifier uh, with a black panel. So it looks similar to the um, the Deluxe. And I imagine on our social media somewhere, a picture went up or is going up of that rig. Hmm. I haven't looked if it got posted. It got sent to be posted earlier today. So, yeah, man, it's real simple. It's like two amps. I think he uses one for rhythm and one for lead. And uh, and that's I think that's the whole rig, a wireless. <laughs> Does he play lead? Yeah. Yeah. He's every bit the guitar player that his brother is. Hmm. I didn't know. And they're both great guitar players. Um yeah, he, he he plays uh lead and rhythm. There's some songs he doesn't play on. Hmm. Um where he's just the front man and there's a song where he plays keyboards on. And uh, uh they were great. Fuck, they were great. That's they were great. so much fun. You saw him in um, LA? Yeah, yeah, at the Wiltern Theater here uh last Friday. It's a late night. Oh yeah. I went down at like five in the afternoon. To br- I had to bring him the amp. Uh, so long story. The amp got shipped to him in England. And it went to England, was sitting in customs. Where the guitar tech called FedEx and said, is there anything I need to do? Is there anything I need to pay? Is there anything that at all? No, no, it should be released any day. And then the next thing we know, we both re- we he receives a notice that it's being shipped back to me. And I tried to call him and try to stop it from coming back. Of course, it was too late. The shipping label is already made. Well, no one ever contacted us. No one ever contacted him for the customs duties. No one contacted anyone about anything. And it came back. And then when it came back, they charged me $700. Are you serious? Yeah. Jesus Christ. When I shipped it over there for, you know, 150 with a FedEx great rate. Right. So now I have, and wait, to top it off, it finally comes back the day before their show here, the afternoon, like three o'clock in the afternoon, it comes back. We open it up and customs had taken it apart. They had taken the whole amp apart. And when they put it back in the box, they left off half the padding that I had put it in. They did not screw it into the actual head shell, the chassis. 
all the screws were in the bottom of the box. The back panel was on the amp with all the screws in the bottom of the box. And the chassis was just dangling around in the head shell the whole trip from England. So in turn, some stuff was damaged, like the head shell, a power switch. Uh, it was broken clear off. Uh, you know, surprising the tubes were in one piece. Um, but, you know. So I have a claim with FedEx right now. So what did you get him a, a new amp? No, no, no I fixed it. it. Oh, you fixed it all. Yeah. In less I was than done. I was done fixing it. I started Thursday and then I was done fixing it by uh right before I had to drive down there. <laughs> it was the race. Yeah. The fire. So fuck you, FedEx. <laughs> so I have a bone to pick and you know the funny thing is I filed a claim. Uh, oh, someone's going to call you about the claim. I haven't heard from them yet. At all. So now I'm going to have to call them again. And I'm going to have to chase them. These corporations. Look, I don't even care about the damage at this point. I, how about you just reverse the shipping charges for the return trip? I'll be okay with that. Mm. But $700, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, that's, no. that's ridiculous. Uh, man. Rummy, what's going on? Dave, for your two notes cabs, what mics do you prefer for the Greenback 412? How would you set them? By the way, Tone Master Pro sounds incredible. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, uh, 57, 121, 57, slightly off, uh, dust cap, right? Kind of on the spot where the dust cap meets the cone. And a uh, maybe a Royer 121 maybe is an option blended in slightly uh, on the center of the cone. Slightly. Hmm. You could also pick another one. You could pick a Bayer 160 or you could blend it with something else. Okay. Um. Give me one second here. That's why I like static IRs. This gives you way too many options when you have to move the mic and move to, to choose the mics and everything else. It's like, don't you want that just done? <laughs> right. Uh, so your buddy again sent another twelve bucks or something. Um, two two thousand yen. Yeah, but. Yen? No, wait. Japanese currency. I have no idea what that is. I don't see his question again, Velcro. Um, so I don't know, man. Uh, well, thank you, though. We appreciate it. Uh, cardboard, Dave, on the BE100 Deluxe, what is the technical difference between the masters and the system volume? Are the channel masters similar to a traditional Marshall master volume? Channel masters are uh, uh, like a traditional Marshall, uh, like the Marshall master volume, uh, and um, the system. So, so that that master would feed how much level goes out the send of your effects loop, and then the master, the system master, is after the return of the effects loop. So you can think of that as your power amp volume, so to speak. So probably if you're feeding effects, you probably want to keep your master somewhere around five-ish, roughly, and then just use your system master as as um, your overall volume that brings all in, up and down your channels. That's probably the best signal-to-noise ratio to do it that way, although you don't have to do it that way. You can crank the system master and use the channel masters lower if you'd like. Okay. The 2,000 yen is roughly 1337 US. Well, thank you. He's done it a few thank times. Thank you, Raymond. We appreciate it. Uh, Dave, have you ever worked with Megadeth's Kiko Larrero? No. Our own Terry Mas... Uh, I can't say that. From Finland, just did an amazing replacement for Kiko. Hello from Finland. Hey. I don't even know how to even think about saying that. Yeah. Timmy... <laughs> No, don't even try. Yeah, I know. I, I butcher it. Uh, yep. Well, that's cool. Well, great. No, I've never worked with them. Would love to. 
Uh, Mark, the Seagull Acoustics were involved with Godin back in the day. I queued for Zion guitars in the late 80s, and Robert Godin made the next first Zion, at least for a while, and we carried Seagull. Oh, okay, cool. cool. Yeah, it was one of my first... Uh, I bo actually bought the acoustic from a previous boss that I used to work with. Um, Davis Phillips. Sorry, called the Freeman Fuzz a fuzz face instead of a fuzz fiend earlier. Are those cool? I have been on the fence about grabbing one for years. Well, I think oh, they're have, great. Yeah, you have to buy one used though. They're not made anymore, right, Dave? Um, no, they're not made anymore. But you have to get one used. Uh, um, they're cool pedals. I, 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 I think they're really cool. They're not like a total. They're not like a fuzz facey kind of sound. No, they work really well into an already slightly distorted amp to begin with. And then that the, the the rage switch is really neat. Uh, Chris Barclay, hey, what's up, Chris? I met Justin's tech. His stint with La with Laney was short lived due to reliability. Yes, I heard that story. Yeah, Justin's tech in uh, in um, keep wanting to say Ian Thorn in Norfolk. Norfolk, Norfolk. Hmm. Uh, yes, I heard that story. The Laney's weren't. Now he's been using the the Friedman for a while. He really loves it. It's funny that what happened was the um, the Friedman was gotten to be Dan's amp. So um, Dan is brother. Uh, and so when it arrived, Justin got to it first and tried it. And then it was like, it's not Dan's amp anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Justin told me that story and Dan, his brother told me the same story. <laughs> yeah. I got it for me. And then he took it. <laughs> take, as brothers do, I would take it back. I'm like, well, you know, you could order another one. <laughs> I can get you one. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Pifty, Dave, have you ever worked with Reinhold Bogner? Uh, I've known Reinhold since he walked in the door from from Germany. Um, so worked with him, not per se worked with him, but I've known him since literally he came in the door in flowered pants and didn't speak a lick of English or a couple words, maybe. I mean... He still wears those flowered pants. Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Doug, Justin does have a great YouTube channel. Uh, his, really he, yeah, man, he's really active, too. I, um, you know, I was talking to him about that, and um, he he records a bunch of shows at once and then hands them off to some editors uh, and then they, you know, put them, put them up for him. Hmm. Uh, but I mean, like he does, I mean, a lot of the, the videos that he does are short, you know, they're not, they're not really long, you know, when he's talking about a band or something, right? Those, 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 the, the, they're 15 minutes or something, you know? Um, but yeah, he does a lot of them. I, for, I forgot what, how many he said a week, but it's, it's quite a few mm. yeah and he idea. has you know five hundred thousand followers does he really already yeah wow yeah well yeah. send some send some our way justin <laughs> <laughs> we will we will um we'll have him on we'll have a, a fine chat yeah that'd be awesome that'd be great he's he's uh i i really loved him He's hmm. just a wonderful human. So good to hear. Yeah. Jeremy Red Door, what's going on? Thanks for the super chat. Thoughts on using the Line 6 HX effects with one of your amps, like a Twin Sist or Wildwood Small Box, or even with an IRX, trying to simplify the rig with solid anchor of main tone using your amp. Yeah, man. I mean, that that works fine. In fact, I, I, I've seen a few people use the HX effects with the IRX um with great results the other thing that works really well is the boss ms3 um that's really cool um 
has less problems with the channel switching that the Line 6 has. Some things to know about the Line 6 HX effects that will... Run, you can run into problems and ground loops and things, but you know if you know know how to deal with them, it's fine. Yeah, I had I like the line six H effects. Yeah, HX it sounds good. It it, yep. it can be good. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, remember when you ever use something like that though? Um, anything like modeler related that is a four cable method, you are converting your guitar signal from analog. To digital and back to analog before you ever hit the front of the amp hmm. and I'm not that into that because I think it kind of alters the tone a little bit uh, it can be useful and it can be fine and it can be really close and you know it's it's good sometimes it causes a little extra hiss or a little extra noise um, but um, I see the point, but that that does a pretty good job. Cool. Uh, Wayne Tone Seeker Anderson, do you recommend using the Paralyzer a lot more than the built-in parallel loops in the PBC-10 on my new board build with MD-500, DD-500, and RV-500? Well, the, the PBC-10, no, you don't have to use the Paralyzer with that. The PBC-10 has some mixable effects loops in it. Uh, so you wouldn't necessarily have to use that at all. Um, all those effects that you're talking about do have an analog dry path, though. So it's not really necessary to do it. So you could you can run through them and it'd be fine. Hmm. Oh, Jason says yes. Oh. Okay. Should I send you the link and you send? Well, just send him the link that I sent you. Oh, will that work? This is the yeah. same, same link. Oh, okay. Hold on. Um, now I gotta. There you are. Okay. Okay. We're gonna have Jason Tong join us. Yeah, why not? You guys remember who Jason is? For a little chat. Why not? Yeah, we'll go for another half hour or so. Um, all right, I sent Jake, Jason the link. We'll see how long it takes him to get it. Okay, uh, Bruce. What should I set the Boss TAE to for the Jakey e. Lee 20? 10 or 50 watts, no 20 watt option. Any danger choosing the wrong one? Amazing amp, dark lard, Dave. <laughs> no, it's just, it's really kind of more about... Um, attenuation of it i mm, try it on the 50 watt or 10 I, yeah how loud you know how loud are you going to crank it i mean i wouldn't crank it that loud you know like the, the jel you know it say like four on the master starts to distort the power section and at some point it's like probably start sounding worse sort of designed to you know just play with where that's set you know Dave, why does the EVH and the Phaser nine Phase ninety reissue not sound like the script logo components? Yep, that's basically it. Well, the Phase ninety reissue. Well, which one? So the closest one to a vintage one would be the script logo hand wired reissue, custom shop one. Yep. Custom shop one. Although I don't think it still sounds like the original. Um, so the custom, I have a theory about this. I don't know if it's true, uh, cause I've never had the chance to try to prove it. <laughs> uh, the reissue all uses metal film resistors and like better quality caps and stuff than the original. And I think the, the, the very original script logo used all carbon resistors in it. Um, not carbon film, even carbon resistors and uh, they just sound a little gooier and a little gushier. It's hard to explain. It's just a little bit better. The closest thing to a vintage one, though, is the 74 Custom Shop, uh, whatever they call it, 74 Custom Shop reissue, and wire. So. 
Okay. Even doesn't have a power jack. <laughs> this is, I love that people will look out for me. Hey, Mark, is your pedal board done? <laughs> yes, it's done. It's been done. Did you send it? No, I haven't sent it yet. Okay. <laughs> I've fucking been inundated with questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, let me know how much I No, because I still want to make sure all the MIDI is working properly, so you don't have to go through that. Um, so I will do that um, on Monday morning and then try to get it packaged up. Beautiful. I don't have a... I'm not playing with my band until November. Uh, Perfect. You'll get it before then. Yeah. We're playing November 15th. And then I'll sit there on the phone with you and walk you through it. <laughs> okay. You'll need to do that? Probably. Okay. <laughs> hey jason hey what's, what's going up on? how are you no, no it's an impromptu visit like i always do with your show yeah, yeah man i'm uh, <laughs> i'm, I'm, I'm crashing your stream no problem That's you fine. Fine. what's going on oh man it's um 20 to 1 in the afternoon here on saturday i've just i just got i just got back i watched the beginning of the stream and i had to jump out i mean, oh, just okay. came home and saw your text message so yeah awesome <laughs> cool. very cool yeah uh, I, I was like saw you in the chat i'm like yeah let's give him an invite <laughs> join the party <laughs> join the party exactly so it seems to be doing this every day at the it's moment saturday yeah so you're doing a we weekly did. you're doing a weekly thing now jason right? yeah look i look we've done five in a row now and like um pretty awesome dave you know dave came on the first i think you came four weeks in a row man which was which was just killer and uh, I had Lyle on yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. or maybe it was a day before, actually. Day before, yeah. yeah ended, up doing, ended up doing three hours. <laughs> so, um, you know how these things go, right? All of a sudden, it's like, oh, shit, it's, we're at the three-hour mark. We probably should wind it up. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. exactly. I've been there many times. When when Mark starts <laughs> falling asleep, I know when we, we should start. Uh, I think um, I think when we, if we ever reach four hours, like you guys have done a few times, then I know that I've, you know. But that's a milestone to hit, yeah. Four we hours. almost hit five with the John. Oh, really? Sir, yeah, the John Sir episode was like four and four, four forty-four or something like that. Oh my God, was it really? <laughs> yeah, it's almost five hours because John was like, he said, "I might leave it until we finish all the questions. Let's just keep going until we get all." And people just kept sending questions. Oh man, yeah, it was crazy. Um, and didn't didn't you didn't he do two like back? -to yeah, yeah, yeah. And we was, did two of them. <clears throat> The second one was four hours as well, wasn't it? Pretty much. Yeah, we did two four. Yeah, both of them for four. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Those are good ones. Those are yeah. Those are worth a rewatch for sure. Yeah, those yeah. are good. Lots of stuff was said on those. That yeah. was great. It feels like another lifetime ago. So uh, Jake, Jakey Lee episode was four hours too. And was it really? Oh yeah. I haven't gone back and watched a lot. Yeah, you don't want to watch that one. <laughs> maybe for the first two hours, maybe. But yeah, don't, don't watch the last hour, man. Don't, don't watch fine. the last hour. That's the that's, that's when I start repeating myself. That's when everybody. That's when everybody <laughs> wants a bottle to watch. of scotch has already been consumed. And uh, well, you were are, you were actually with Jake, weren't you, Dave? Like, oh yes, I was. Then. That was a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot dangerous. Of fun. Yeah, the whole thing with his wife and the whole, it was just so good. Oh yeah, this was just surreal. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing is just, uh, the, the story just from that night was so great. Um, here's a question. Jeremy Reddor, follow up to the multi effects unit with your with one of your amps, maybe better just in the loop as opposed to four cable method then. Well, I mean, like I said, with any of these four cable methods mm -hmm. with these digital devices right so you you know you go in with a guitar and it converts to digital and then back from digital to analog again and so there's latency there and then um you know i don't know there's something fundamentally wrong with me on the front end of doing that conversion if i can avoid it i would probably rather not you you do find too dave don't you that was a with a digital device in front of a high gain amp you can get a little bit of hiss there that'll often come yeah often there'll be a much higher uh noise floor a little yeah. more hiss and there's things you have to do i mean like the older uh i'm not so much sure about the newer ones but the older axe effects or cable method were like hiss factories in front of a in front of an amp i remember and, getting uh, one of those um those line six hx effects mm -hmm. when they first came out 
Yeah. And that, that was pretty hissy in front yeah, of with high yeah. game. Yeah. It can be anytime, anytime you do a, a D to A and A to D conversion, you're going to run into that issue. Um, it's just a question of how, how bad is it? It's, it's, it's sometimes it's not that bad, but well, um, when you gave me the tip about cutting the ground on some of those cables. Well, yeah, know. but also like on your, on your new board, Mark, what I did is I, we, I have a loop switcher. So that front end digital front end has a loop. So if you're not using it, you take it completely out of the chain. Ah, okay. So think, think, think of it, think of your, think of your line six as two parts, right? So you have the front end stuff and it's in a loop. So you can bypass it. Right. And then right. the, the back end is all, all, always in, you know, and that, that is just, you know, your post effects like delay reverb or whatever. So with a loop switcher, you can bypass all that crap so that the hiss goes away, everything goes away, and it's only in when you are using an effect. Like, say, you use an octave or something out of the, the line six. It's only in when you turn the loop on mm. for it. What, um, what switcher are you using there, Dave, on that board? On, on this one, it's just a Boss ES5. Okay. It's a yeah. simple, small little looper that's easy to yeah. use and, and works well. It'll channel switch the amp and do all that stuff, you know. What would you um, get today for like dealing with dealing with ground loops? I've got one of those EbTech, you know, little boxes with the. Actually, know, those work great. Um, yeah. They work fine. Um, you know, I make custom things all the time for stuff like that. Generally, so, I don't think they make. Do the are they the EbTech boxes still for sale? Like, I don't think they, they do are. make it, but they made it uh, in true because Morley owns EbTech. Yeah. It's, and yeah. in true morally fashion, they can't seem to make anything in a in a proper <laughs> format. <laughs> in so a format that anyone the wants. New, the new Hum Eliminators, all the jacks are on the top of it instead of out the sides. All the jacks are on top, and then there's also XLRs there also. Ah, uh, yeah. Which that's yeah. good and all, but the cables are sticking straight up in the air. What? It's probably bigger than it needs to be as well, Fuck right? Me, you know, it's not that big, but it's 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 awkward, hmm. super awkward. But I actually will probably make something um, available, maybe through fixed pedal boards. That'll be some ISO transformer boxes. Hmm. Yeah, and That'd stuff be awesome. with with them that that you can just buy here. Buy it, right? You know. Not that expensive. Just go buy this. It's not as expensive as a Palmer or something, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's I'm also sure. a good. That's also a good recommendation to Jeremy potentially if he wants to do the four cable method. Get yourself a a looper, a switcher. You could. Uh, you could do that. You could if you did, did a switcher. You can literally take that front end out. But I think he wants to keep it simple. So yeah, if you want to keep it simple. I mean, to be honest, I mean that little line six HX. Works well. Works pretty well, you know. Yeah, if you just want to use the effects in your loop and not yeah. worry about anything in the front. Boss MS3 works pretty well too. And what was the other one that you said that Ampero? Uh, Ampero Two Stomp works great also. Um, is that the little the white one, Dave? The, yeah, man, that thing's awesome. Oh, time. Yeah. yeah. You know what's great about it? You can figure it all out on the screen, and it's all touch screen. Yeah. And that's cool. I mean, because it's just intuitive to figure yeah. it out. I mean, you can <laughs> literally get it in front of you and go, oh, click, click. Okay, got it. Boom, 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 you know. And, and okay, yeah, I got it up and running. Now, there's some more advanced features that maybe you might need the editor for. Like, there's a, a loop on the side if you're going to do a pre-post thing where uh you can set levels and things like that and you know maybe you the editor for that the editor is really nice because you um you can see like the all the effects that are listed on the front of the unit you can actually see the descriptions of those effects and what they're supposed to be yeah uh, in the editor <clears throat> which is really nice it's like oh that chorus that says Chorus two is supposed to be a CE two chorus. CE2, but, yeah, you know, yeah. You don't have to. Or, you don't have to have the you know, cheat sheet to try and. Yeah, you, don't, you, you get the cheat sheet with the editor. <clears throat> yeah, uh, 
and, uh, and you know, but it is intuitive just on front, really fast and easy. Probably they sound, they sound good too, man. I, yeah. I, a friend of mine's got one, and I had to play through it for about half an hour or so, including some of the amp models. And yeah, the pretty, amp models sound pretty good too. Wow. Well. Yeah, and Celestian IRs built in. Uh, you know, they they come with that, and it's like, it's great. Wow, yeah, it's quite good. That's good. Uh, Zeke Downey, what's going on? Thanks for the super chat. Thank you, Dave, for answering my email today about a replacement front panel for a JJ100. No one can match your customer service, and it's so cool to actually e email with the man himself. Fantastic. Sometimes uh, I'm pounding my head against the desk, though. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one's as good on email as Dave is. That's I true. am pretty good on email. If I haven't answered your email, there must be a reason I didn't get it or something. You know, so um, if you say I, you didn't get a response from me, somehow I maybe didn't get it. So. <laughs> You'll get a response. I mean, maybe occasionally an email will get kind of pushed down the list and I missed it or something. Cause sometimes I read the emails and I literally go, I can't answer this right now. Yeah. You got to go back to it. No, yeah. I, I, it's just too long or too detailed or too, it's just too much at the time of my, you know, end of my day. I go, I can't, I can't can't yeah i need a breather let, let, let me let me come back to this and then occasionally that'll get pushed down and maybe i won't see it again or something but i i try to keep my email box kind of cleared out as much as possible so that doesn't happen um you know i i t after i'm done answering i toss that email away so mm. um you know or or log an email in another box you know somewhere because i can't I can't have a inbox that says I have a thousand emails. I'll kill myself. <laughs> John, I appreciate uh, you saying that. Uh, <laughs> I spent a few yeah, Mark hours. Mark got all fancy with his lighting now. It looks nice. It's looking good. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thanks. And now I feel kind of like bastard stepchild over here. Now I, <laughs> I need I need some like background up lights and the red curtains in the back, you know, I need, I need some stuff. Yeah. I, that would work well, actually. You know, that, that really would work well. I can, I, oh. I can do that. Uh -huh. It's going to come now. By the way, that, that's a great comment. Uh, it is now it's Friday the 13th. Cause we got Jason. <laughs> on. Oh, oh my God, that's great. <laughs> you know, I saw, I saw that comment in the chat note. I didn't actually connect with, um, <laughs> but of course. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I'm going to put that on the title with Jason. <laughs> <laughs> right. You should. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, that's, uh, that's funny. Not bad. <laughs> Dave, have you ever thought of doing a bass amp? Yes. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> or how about a bass preamp? Ooh. How about a bass preamp pedal? How's that? Mm. That could be cool. Mm -hmm. I'd probably do that first. If I did. There well, was a prototype bass amp we had floating around that we did have that did sound great. Um, but, you know, in the format of the IRX, a bass preamp could be really cool. Yeah, because you talked about this previously on one of the previous shows. We talked yeah. about... Yeah, like you would do, that. do more of a cleaner first channel and then put the plexi on the second channel. Well, yeah, or or something you can blend the two, you know. Many bass players often blend a dirty and with a clean, you know, right. so that would be cool. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Blend knob. Work out some phasing issues, but yeah, it's possible. Dave, would you do um, a super bass style channel or more like a like you kind of go for an svt or like an ampeg for the gritty or... channel well, well yeah, for I, guess the... you, I guess i don't either, know either i don't know things. i don't know to be honest you could do one of each maybe yeah um that'd be cool it's a good question because <clears throat> you could have that like with your power amp and i mean it could be a d straight to di right or something like that yeah yeah straight to di and then i have to have irs of SVT A10s and things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, that sounds like a project. Uh, it would sell, I bet. 
Uh, Tris, what's going on? Great show. Guys, you're awesome to answer everyone's questions. I run a line level effects loop out and back to my pedal board and need to expand, run 25 feet out and 25 feet back. What cable brand do you suggest? Low loss needed. I mean, any good quality shielded cable should be fine. I mean, as long as it's not crap. I mean, really, as long as whatever... Um, line level as long as it's a buffered line level it should drive any 25 feet is not even very far reach or, out to signum signum pedal uh signum cables yeah Maybe. he can make you some stuff that's great yep Do reach that. out to signum it's signum cables i think dot com or just look them up signum cables and um i want to spell that for them s-i-g-n-u-m there you go all right. Vinny and, can make you something that you'd like. And speaking of Vinny, he's got, I think he's just waiting for one last thing and those cables will be ready to go. So he's shipping out the uh, cards to me. I'm going to sign them and then I'm going to ship it out to you, Dave. And then we'll. Uh, we haven't we'll even like discussed the deal yet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, you mean, yeah, we got to discuss the deal. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got to discuss gotta, the. Details. We got to figure out that whole thing. Yeah, but I those are the those those details. I know we're going to get worked out. Yeah, so, I know. it's fine. So it's just a matter of we're going to release the cables eventually. But yeah. Mark is Vinny is Vinny doing a range of links or like like just going to be like a, a twenty foot standard kind of thing or are we going to have different? No, well, we're going to have, have different it. links. But I think I talked to him about that, and I don't remember what we finally settled on. Twenty foot is probably mostly the standard but there might be shorter probably not longer mm -hmm. okay and then we were going to have options for the connectors i think whether it be angle it's all or... going to be nitric connectors i do believe and um um either a no pop or not a no pop and straight or angled yeah so so, but, um, but there's the, no pop. I mean, for guitar cables, for me, you got to have that. And they're going to be nice, limited. Nice thing. That's the the kind of crimsony colored end with the yeah. the mm -hmm. ground. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm looking down here because of. You got one. One of these, yeah. Yeah, you got to have got, that. You just yeah. got to have that. It's got that little spring. Yeah, it shunts shunts. Yeah, sometimes yeah, which it ground, breaks, but grounds the tip. Yeah, sometimes it breaks, but um. In general, it lasts a long time, and you can just throw it on the floor. Then, when you unplug it, so yeah, put the amp uh, on. Uh, that's super good, super handy. Yeah, yeah. gotta have that. That's, that's cool. Yeah, so those will be limited, though. We're not going to have like unlimited supply of those. So, I think the first run will be fifty, and then if you can get, or we may have more than fifty, maybe we'll be able to do a hundred. But cables, yeah. I mean, he could order more belding cable eventually, but I mean, I mean, he must have ordered a thousand feet. I think he ordered two rolls that would give us fifty cables at twenty feet. At twenty, at, yeah. At, as far as I know, you can only get the cable on a thousand foot roll. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But when yeah. we when we divided it by twenty feet, I think it came out to fifty cables. So, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay. I, I can't do the math in my head. Yeah. Right so, <laughs> okay. Uh, Bill, trying to use the SD3000 EVH to run 50 loop. It sounds good, but it's not totally transparent. I know the loop is not the issue. The run fifth loop, run loop is pristine. So it's probably setting on the SDE. Put it in the analog um, setting, the dry, dry path. Dry path. And that should be fine. And then, then it's all kind of about setting the levels properly. Yeah, depends on what patch you're using. Also, I think like the EVH patches are already set with the analog dry path. Are they? I, don't I think, think so. so. I think that's what Pete said. I thought because you can't you can't edit it. No, but I don't think it has. It might not have the analog dry path. No, I think think it doesn't. You have to set the analog drive path. If you, you don't want have to, use to the... set the analog drive path, I mean, like they modeled 
So in the non-analog dry path, they actually modeled the dry path yeah. of the original, of which original was analog. So this doesn't make a lot of sense, but so <clears throat> so in reality, using the pedal in non-analog dry path is probably more um, closer to the original. Hmm. But I'd say using an analog dry path. I, okay. I've got one too, Mark, and I've, I have actually started to use it. And one, one of the things I discovered is that the noise suppressor, which is awesome in that pedal, only works if you got it in the non-true bypass or whatever Correct. you call it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's obviously it's through the digital domain. Yeah. yeah, but I haven't found it. Like, I, to me, it it's sounds fine. pretty transparent. Like, yeah, yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, I agree. It's a great, great sounding pedal. Uh, yes, signummusic.com. There you go. Yes, Tone Talk Cables. We will, uh, we'll let you know more when we have all the details sorted out. And we have a link to a website picture and everything. That'll be. <laughs> that'll be yeah, great. we're going to have, it'll be. It's it'll 20 be foot Belden 9778. There you go with probably end options. Right angle, straight, or too straight, all nitric. I assume one's a no pop too, right, Vinny? He said we can add a no pop if requested. There you yeah. go. Yes. Yeah. No pop should be standard, to be honest. John says he'll take four. <laughs> Wait till we give the prices. Um, By the way, so these cables are uh, a 9778 with nitric ends, maybe a no pop. Well, no pop probably on a lot of them. And then they're sheathed in a outer sh sleeving. So it's not just the raw cable, you know. So um, a lot of work. It's expensive. It's not going to be like super cheap. Yes. Got to. We have to be honest about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now Vinny's messaging me in the phone. <laughs> uh, let's see. Thousand here. feet. Uh, 50 cables to start, all nitric. No pop if requested. Yeah. Okay. Got it. <laughs> okay. WGS speakers, opinions. Now nah, I heard some of those that are pretty good. The, the Veteran 30 was always a pretty good speaker. Yeah. Um, sounded pretty good. It was sort of like a vintage 30 without the mid spike. Um, I've got a um I've got a Sir 1 by 12 that came factory that with that speaker in it. And I know John, I mean I haven't spoken to John about it personally, but I've heard him talk about it and mm -hmm. he he chose that speaker deliberately. He likes it. Yeah, uh, it's a, it's like a V30 without the mid spike. I have the mix of their what's what's the name of the V30 called? What's Veteran 30? Veteran 30. 30. And then they have a greenback similar greenback mm -hmm. model also. I have that in the uh, third power cab that I have right there. Yeah, okay. Is that the, they call it the Green Beret? Is that that one, uh, Mark? Green think, Beret? Yeah, I think that, I think I think that might be it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they sound good. It sounds good. I, you know, I use that because that, that cab is the one from third power that Delana did was a wet, dry, wet cab. So the bottom, it, it could be used as a regular 412, or you can do it as wet, dry, wet, where the bottom two speakers are the oh, dry and the top okay. two speakers are left and right. Oh, wow. Okay. That's yeah, fancy. That's pretty cool. It is cool. It, I've never seen a cab done like that before. No. She's not offering it anymore. Um, but That's why not? Cool. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. I don't know. It, was that, it's, it mm. says out of production. Yeah, maybe there wasn't enough demand for it. You know, um, <laughs> so let's see. Yes, yeah, so all hand soldered and assembled. Uh, opinion on the PV Scorpions as guitar speakers. Never heard of them. Oh, man, the old ones. You know what? I haven't heard one in so long. I, I don't think I could comment because I don't really have any recollection of what exactly they sound like. Uh so don't know. I wasn't a fan of the Sheffields, and I know people love the Sheffields in the 
5150 cabs. Some people love them. I, I didn't like it. Everyone I knew pulled them out and put V V thirties on them. Cabinet was solid because the cabinet was a Baltic Birch Marshall four twelve, so to speak. Yeah. Um I have an empty one sitting in the other room here. Hmm. It was in my storage that I just realized I still owned. <laughs> they've, they've gone up a lot in price. Yeah. Well, I got an empty one if anyone wants it. Empty uh, slant 5150 cabinet. So if anyone wants that, I'm a game. Uh, give me an offer. Good luck. I also shipping. have, I also have um, some older front loaded. I think I have two, maybe three front loaded Randall cabinets that I'd be willing to take any offer on if you want to take them away. Hmm. They're empty. <clears throat> Clearing spice. I, I can get pictures later for someone if they'd like, but they're in, they're in the storage right now. So I I was thinking hey, of take a them away price. So I I'm th I'm thinking about getting rid of another amp that I I remember I I said to you I bought the Ampeg, and you were like oh really and I I was like yeah it was it was like one of those impulse buys, you know. You can mod them to be really cool. Was that the the Lee Jackson modded one? Mod? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Lee Jackson Ampeg. Yeah. yeah, crazy. Yeah. I modded those before, and they sound really cool when you're done. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe I'll send it to you. Yeah. If you want something <laughs> different? I can do something different on it. All right. Let's. It'll let's be wickedly better than it, it what is. What are now. the what's the what's the stock circuit like, Dave? What, what, what's it? Kind oh of God. Uh, it's it's a gain stage in front of like a JCM 800D kind of circuit, yeah, so right. you have a lot to work. You have a lot to work yeah. with, you know. Absolutely. So it's it's really about changing. Mostly, it's about changing the front end um, uh, boost, you know, circuit, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You change that up, and you can make it sound infinitely better. Um, is it one of those situations where there's there's like too too much bottom end, too much gain coming from that? Yeah, stage? it's just too like loose and the weird sounding, sounding, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not loose. tight, loose, yep. funny yep. sounding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the nice thing though is that still has the um, what the did they call it? Range mid switch. That's six position switch. Six position switch, which oh, is yeah. just, it changes the treble cap. So oh, okay. It's six different oh. values. So it starts at 250 puff and then like 470 puff and then 001 and then 0022 and 0047 or something like that. It's crazy big. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but cool. actually, that's cool to leave because it's really sort of neat when you when you have a proper circuit and then you're listening to that. It's mm. kind of cool. Yeah. But it can get weird the way it's set up now. It's like, uh it can but once you fix the front end then it's less weird and then it's just like oh i like that position okay cool i like that you know it's cool i'll send it to you all right yeah why I not right i won't use fedex so you can no you, please <laughs> actually use fedex i like my fedex driver so <laughs> <laughs> okay oh, this I'm is too. nothing no this really has nothing to do with fedex this has to do with uk customs mm. Oh, this is the Justin Hawkins. Yeah, this has to do with fucking UK customs. Yeah, taking the fucking amp apart, throwing it back, literally throwing it back in the box without half the padding I put in, because I, it's a standard Friedman box, but then I put extra bubble wrap and stuff because it's going a long way, right? So mm -hmm. I wanted to get there in one piece. Well, it got there in one piece, but apparently it came back in pieces because they took it apart and threw the parts in the box. Fuckers. Insane. That's insane. Uh, that it's UK insane. Customs. It's not, it's not really actually it's not FedEx. It's the UK Customs people. I've never heard of that happening before. That's crazy. Uh, you know what? I've it? shipped a million amps all over this country. This country and every other country. And the world, yeah. And never once has one returned to me. That's crazy. Ever. Never. Never. What was the excuse? Has it got stuck in customs end? before? Sure. Have I had to send extra paperwork or some bullshit like that? The customs? Yes. Yeah. Never once has one returned to me. What was the rationale, though? What did they say? There is no rationale. I got no rationale That's out of it. 
yeah, could not cool. get in touch with customer. Well, they didn't try to get in touch with the customer. They got no rationale. There's no nothing. You know, it's like I'm gonna be someone. Fine. Someone there just didn't like the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be fight. The, the darkness name wasn't even on it. <laughs> oh, they might know who Justin is though. Yeah, know. Justin Hawk. His name know. wasn't on it either. It was for oh, yeah. his, his guitar tech. So, well, then, yeah, right. Well, there you go. Wow. Uh, Jeff K, what's going on? Hey, Dave, just picked up the IRX. My main goal is with IRs for the home studio. Thoughts on going into the return of a Marshall SV20 with non master volume? What front panel amp control will I lose? You can go in into the return of an SV20. Um, you won't have any other than the IRX volumes. You won't have any master volume control, so to speak, because there is no volume. It's like wide open, but it should sound great into that. Um, shouldn't be any problem. Um, so you, do you just want to run into that? Is that what you want to do? So, uh, I mean, yeah, if so, you come out the send of the effects loop and then into the, the power section of that. You could also try just turning the IRs off and coming out of the balanced out with a normal T TS cable uh, into the return, and then you get a little extra control with the presence and thump. You get a little extra tweakable control then. Um, I kind of look at that like in the old days we used to slave – a marshal yeah. into into some sort of form of reactive load, right? So I look at that IRX if you come out the balanced out as like a slaved marshal. So that's cool, actually. You know, I think I think it, you know, if it sounds good, it sounds good. And the only um no the only pot, yeah, yeah. The only pot that'll still work on your on your marshal will be the present spot. Correct. Mm -hmm. Last part of the question there. Yeah. yeah. So all the other yeah. stuff will not yeah but, but it, it, that'll sound great yeah now but if it, you need more control so there's going to be some uh accessory products that we are going to make i don't know how long it's going to take that will be kind of accessories to the irx and um we'll see what that all winds up being but it'll be little plug-in accessory things for your pedal board that'll work you know you want the XLR out. Okay, well, here's a box that does the XLR out. And you want the, you know. Um, hmm. You could, uh, if you need a volume control for said 20-watt amp, you could use like a, um, let's say you're coming out the send of the effects loop of the IRX and you go to some effects. And then you want to go to front of house still, but you also want to go to your SV20. So what you're going to need to do at that point is after your last effect, effect in the effects loop of the amp, you need to split two ways. So one line is going to go to your SV20 return, and the other is going to come back into the IRX uh, return on the effects loop. And then you can take the IRX balanced out to XLR and send that to front of house. So you have that all the time, but you can monitor with your amp. But since you have no volume with that amp, you could buy a JHS little black box yeah, and put that in line before the return, and then you have a volume control. Hmm. And you can just turn it down to any volume you want, down to zero if you want. Wow, that's cool. So, there's there, the, the thing about this thing is there's a multitude of ways to hook it up, and you just have to be kind of ingenious on in how you're going to hook it up, you know? Yeah, but if your main goal here is just using it for home studio, why not just go direct into your DAW? Yeah, well, he's going to. I mean, but, yeah. you know, he just wanted to see about that. You know, that's yeah. that's a cool way to do it, too. Mm -hmm. You just want to hear it through a cabinet in your room, and you just want to hear a real cabinet, you know? Why not? Nothing beats, nothing beats that, man. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know? All right. That's you could, studio record, you could record both. You could do all sorts of things. Yeah. You know? SV, yep. that SV20 would be great with it. Yeah, that'll sound killer. Uh, Dave, it's kind of like just as long, as long as you get, if once you get your head around the fact that it's a tube pre and a digital back end in the IRX, right? Then you can start to think about how to 
Yeah. Use them individually. Like that rig that you just described is using the digital backend and the IR to, to free, feed front of house, but you're bypassing that for when you when you want to send it back to your, your real amp. <laughs> yeah, when, when people think about stereo rigs too and stuff, I always think there's so many different ways to do this. Uh, you know, you know, you know, a really neat way would be to have two IRXs and a pedal board switcher on your board with mm. some effects and stuff. And then you could literally go stereo to front of house with the two IRs. And then you could switch between the two preamp sections of each IRX and all the channels. Talk about versatile. Four channel, you know, you know eight channel. Eight channel. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of eight channels. Yeah, with the you know? boost. Yeah. yeah, with the boost. So you <laughs> yeah. can do clean clean a little bit gritty a little bit grittier you'd go crazy yeah or you could do some parallel path of two slightly you know different amp sounds at the same time I, you can go nuts with it just like amps really you know just like in a different format uh adam planch oh we're doing speakers comeback speakers any experience with these i've never played them yes they're great Great greenback style speaker. Um, been great for a long time. Uh, Dave, have you ever worked with Chris Holmes? Any experience with his Marshall Super Leads from back in the day? Uh, no, I haven't. I did briefly meet him for a second once. Uh, those old, I, I did work on some of Blackley, Blackie Lawless's super leads, which are from the same era. Uh, and they're all stock super leads. I used to crank the piss out of them. And, and he'd I, run them and, at one, at one twenty volts, Dave. Like not yeah, straight yeah. up. Yeah. And they, you know, they, brutal. Yeah. It was, uh, just loud. <laughs> just, just fucking loud. <laughs> It's a good, proper. it's a good word. Good and proper. Yeah. Proper, that's proper, man. That's <laughs> so you I know, know. I was talking to Dan from uh the darkness, the his uh, Justin's brother, and yeah. you know, apparently his deal is he only likes he he uses like super lead style marshals, right? So uh loud and bright. Just is he crushing. using a 50 water or the no, hundred hundreds? Yeah, hundred. Shit. Uh, no, but he he does he does hit it into a power station one hundred, knocks okay. knocks it down a little bit, but it's still loud. Um, but you know he uh, it's it's a, a you know a bright Marshall rock and roll tone, but he only likes them at two thirty volt and fifty hertz. Oh wow! We you had this conversation. The he other day, says. He says 120 at 60 hertz does not sound the same at all. So has he got one of those? He has a Kikusui, grade? Yeah. Yeah. Kikusui uh, thing that he can set whatever voltage and whatever hertz he wants. Yeah. So he, they have it set at 229, uh, 229 volts and at 50 hertz. Interesting. And, man, were they, um, were they super loud on stage, like it's old school you know, loud. I seemed loud. Side. Yeah, I mean, it was knocked down a little bit, but it seemed pretty fucking loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the guitars in the mix out front. Yeah, super loud. I'll be. Were, you know what? It was. It was very um, refreshing to actually hear the guitar in the mix. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Not just kick drum. The guitars were the primary instrument in the mix. <laughs> Vocal, vocals were slightly secondary to it you could hear the vocals but not on top of the guitars too much you know just like mixed in nicely and then you know the drums were there too but it was primarily guitar alec i got a fender frontman 15 g as buzzing noise went on both if the guitar is plugged in or not not no leakage from caps everything looks nice and tidy any ideas noise stops when touching top handle man i don't even know what a frontman 15g is but there's a uh, i see lyle's answer, answered this question because it does sound oh, like did? a ground sounds like a grounding problem doesn't it oh he did yeah well 
Yeah, it does sound like a ground problem. Yeah, maybe. Uh, it does definitely sound like a ground thing. I don't even know what that is. No. <clears throat> Fender, well, it's, it's you know, small, small little amp. Email Lyle. Ask him. <laughs> <laughs> spread, spread the emails around. No more to spread no the more emails to around. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, Let's see. Touching what if the we... handle, though, it seems like there's some sort of grounding something going mm -hmm. on for sure. Yeah. What if your main goal is to use the IRX through a combo? Great. Do yeah, it. Why not? Use it. You can use it one of two ways. You can do the send into the effects loop return. Or wait, are you saying into the front end of a combo? How, yeah. What are you saying? Yeah. Um, but you From could use the send end. into the effects loop return. You could use the balanced out with the IR off into the effects loop return. Um, whichever one sounds better to you is the one you should use. There's no right or wrong. Whatever sounds better into your combo is what you should use. That should go with everything. Really? Like, you know, which order of effects should I use in what way? Sure, there's more kind of proper ways to do certain things, but I've said this before, and there's nothing stopping you from putting your delay first in the chain. You know, whatever. If it makes the sound that you want to hear in your head, it is the proper way to do it. See how they did it in the old days, man. Yeah. Right. Everyone in the old days experimented and they just did what sounded okay to them, or maybe they just didn't know any better and just what it, it, it just sort of was what happened. Everything and, in the front end. And, uh, you know, fine. Like I said, a long time ago, I did a pedal board for the bass player for Rage Against the Machine, and his delay was first. And his wah was last. <laughs> yeah, right. The whole thing was ass backwards, but he it made created it a cool sound, and it worked well. So, no rules. You right. shouldn't have rules. Do you, do you, make, you shouldn't have rules when you make music. You shouldn't have rules when you you're creating a guitar sound what's the rules i mean there's no rules right yeah it's certainly unconventional because it doesn't doesn't tom morello run all of his pedals in the loop yes like, and that's so very it's weird a really unconventional setup on mm -hmm. both sides right yeah in that channel switching marshall and they the two, two, throw five, all five, the five, pedals five. in the loop Incredible. Wah, yeah whammy I mean, who puts a wire in the effects loop? I mean, well, he does, obviously. <laughs> but that's weird. <laughs> and that's a weird Sounds effect. okay, too. It's a weird, it's a weird effects loop, too. Yeah. Was What's it wrong? before what? the EQ? Oh, really? In that amp? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. It's like, a, like an EQ, SLO, right? is it? You get the, um, get the schematic up, Dave. Come on. Yeah, uh, yeah, yep. We're, we're, we're going. What is that? 20, <laughs> we're, we're going there. What's that called? What number is that called? 2203? <laughs> The so twenty two two oh five, yeah. Oh. Uh the split channel, the first one. Um uh yeah, uh hang on. <laughs> uh 2205. There we go. Here's the schematic. And the loop is the hell is loop? Oh, fax loop. Um oh no, it's not before the EQ. Split no, the channel. it's after. That's got to be weird, though. And then, and then, so Tom uses that, but then he uses it into a PV cabinet that he has had for years. A PV cabinet. Wow. And and this is the older. This is pre fifty one fifty PV four twelve cabinet. Um. So. Um, and I think it might have the Scorpion speakers in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, I'm pretty camp. sure it might have the Scorpion speakers in it, and it's it's a three quarter inch thick Baltic birch cabinet. So the ply is three quarter inch thick. So this is a whole different sound. Yeah, I actually think maybe the cabinet might save some of the sound of the amp. I, I think there's a brightness and a brashness to the cabinet that might add because i find those 2205s a little dull sounding right they're they're kind of farty and sort of dull sounding never yeah. played one 
And yeah, they're not they're not the greatest. They're not anime. great. No. And I think the combo of this pedal board with this cabinet just works. It works for him. It sounds good for him. It sounds great. So this is this is the, what I say. There's no rules, right? And you know, and and all those greats that you know had these great guitar sounds on records, they they broke the rules because they had to because they didn't have an amp like one of mine or Jason's or or anything to to make these sounds, right? And maybe that was better, you know. Maybe well, it was less. It uh, led to more individual tone. That's yeah, what maybe it's, more individuality. True, right? You know. Yeah, this is true, right? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's yeah. bringing up the same model in their XFX now, and then wondering why they don't sound <laughs> different to the next. Right. I, don't, I don't have a, my unique tone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, correct. Yeah, who was it on the on the other? Uh, I can't even remember what podcast or what show I've been doing. But someone said something about when I said uh, I said something about um, pickups and axe effects and things, and I think oh, I, said, yeah. I said, "Does it really matter?" It doesn't. What pickup goes into the axe so, effects? Someone brought it up on my stream, Dave. Yeah, when you were on, right. And it was from a previous tone talk, I think, and they wanted to take you to task on it again, which is like, yeah, okay. they wanted they wanted to beat me up on that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, all right, man. Get you over know, it. I mean. I I don't really think the pickup choices with an Axe Effects or or something modeler matter quite as much as a tube amp. I just don't because they're not as dynamic and they're not as sensitive to volume changes and level changes and you know it it tends to compress everything more and you know hey th this is a video we should do this. This is a video that should be done. Let's let's try a multitude of pickups into one Axe Effects preset or something, and then uh, the same pickups, you know, with varying level differences and things, into into a tube amp directly in, mm -hmm. you know, and and like you'd have to try to dial the two sounds as close as you could possibly get them, yeah, and then and then really see. Is there a discernible difference? You know, is there a discernible difference between the pickups on this versus this? No. Yep. Yeah. That would be an interesting. I could one. be wrong. I could be wrong. But I don't know. My my experience is when I'm using my Kemper. I mean, there have been times where I'm on the neck pickup, and I, I can't tell you're not on the bridge. I can't even tell the difference between the neck and the bridge. <laughs> you know, and the Kemper. Like sometimes, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, you know so yeah yeah but anyway um i could be wrong because i've never actually really taken the time to do this to the you know the extent that we probably should test it because i just i'm answering too many questions <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all day every day no, 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 too busy doing emails comment. you know too busy doing emails you know but uh you know hey maybe i'll pose this to michael nielsen he should do a video that'd be good one. for his channel on it that would be a good one. Uh, Alec, I've always wondered if I can run a stock 100 watt super lead through a 4x12 loaded with WGS green berets. They're 25 watt each, but apparently with more headroom. Any thoughts? You probably can if, if, they're, if they're as durable as a greenback, because I've run plenty 100 watt super leads through greenback cabinets on 10, and it's they, they've held up just fine. I mean, technically, a hundred watt super lead is more like one hundred and fifty watts, probably with the, with, you know, at full clip. Yep. But um, I don't know. Maybe. Um, I'm still wondering why no neural DSP Friedman archetype. Because we don't have a deal with neural. I have a plug-in deal with Neural. Well, that makes sense. I have a plug-in deal with Brainworks. Okay. Um, Never know, though, in the future. Uh, let's see. Any other super chats that I'm missing? No. Nope. I think we've gone through most of the questions. Oh, someone will come up with some in a minute. 
let's see Colin, here we go with the irx if splitting it to go front of house and then to a power amp simultaneously do you lose any signal and is there any need to buffer boost when splitting or passive no passive's fine there's you're not going to lose anything it's already buffered okay totally buffered you're totally good you run 50 feet of cable and not lose anything uh the 15g was the king of cheap solid state practice amps in the 90s punches well above its weight okay is that, the, is that reference to the the fender amp that yeah the oh. front, frontman or whatever a frontman yeah oh that's the, that's the one where he said the handle it the the humming would go away when he stopped when he held the handle put your yeah. tongue on it see what happens <laughs> it's like a nine volt I'm battery but, but worse yes. just, <laughs> don't do that please sorry don't do that they don't do don't do that <laughs> <laughs> if you do it you need to video it so we can see oh god <laughs> so you just took it one farther <laughs> oh man no please don't do that we we, we do not accept uh uh we're not responsible for anything that you try to <laughs> exactly. do. Uh, I want the Trans Amber EVH Lefty Mark. You over it yet? Oh, that's that's a grave guitar, man. That, or, like, I really need the money, which I hope never happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that's one of those guitars I just got so lucky getting a quilt EVH. Um. Let me see. Any other questions, Dave, that you see? Um, oh, St Mark, what program do you use to share the screens when you interview people? Uh, this is StreamYard. So uh, they have a free, just go to StreamYard.com, and they have a free program you could use, but I don't think you can share screens when you do that. Um, I think you have to buy the subscription, and then you have some other functionality with it. And but the free I, one has the watermark, like there's a watermark that they have on the thing, right? That you can't get right, off. Right. Streamer, then, Streamer works great now. I think with all with all the improvements and the you know starred column, live column, comments, private chat. You know. Yeah. I mean, they keep adding stuff to it. Yeah. And uh, and it was really nice when they did the starred because then you could just look down the list of your super chats <laughs> oh it makes makes it so much easier yeah yeah uh tobias i love how dave lyle and jason are doing all these live streams and popping into each other's streams yeah great cool. that's fun peter laces has a super chat in here okay Friedman jel versus head first jel fight <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I mean i've done a bunch of jel mods but i don't have a a uh, and, yeah and i think the jel mod is the jel yeah so well, that one right no there. Fight. how do they compare <laughs> well they're the same thing <laughs> it's the same thing <laughs> same thing so you just have Jason to live on the took it and <laughs> well, you got to live on the other side of the world to get it <clears throat> yeah so um well that's cool so you're just doing those mods on various amps. Oh, i've just done a couple like you know on mainly on like i started i had a i got a 1980 jmp 2203 that i did it on mm. that i've still got it's my amp i've kept it and i did a video on it and i was like it, probably two years ago dave something like that mm -hmm. I one of those you know things that i did some fill time in during during the pandemic or something right and i've done uh you know i've maybe done half a dozen of those mods maybe with guys that have sent me it me their jmps something yeah. like that australia is a long way away from here so well it's a 14 hour flight from <laughs> la to, to melbourne i can tell oh, you that I've done that yeah i have never taken a 14 hour flight yeah, it's a i've taken way. a 10 hour flight but not a 14. i had That's 11 four hours too long yeah <laughs> 11 hours i took from rome to miami and uh i think after hour eight, I was like, I had to get up a couple points. Like I was ready to lose my shit. 
Oh, you got to walk around. Yeah, you yeah. I was just like, oh my walk, god, walk, I'm like, walk back, talk to the talk to talk to the flight attendants for a minute, something. <laughs> yeah, you got to get up. I was walking down the aisle. I was like, oh my yeah. god, this is driving me. Nuts. It's either that, or you need a strong pill to put you to sleep for a very yeah. long time. You've got to you've got to prepare yourself mentally for it. You know, like yeah. you've got to kind of like just oh, yeah. know that for the next fourteen hours, you're just going to be sitting here doing <laughs> this. Or you kind of you kind of just go, how many movies am I going to watch? yeah you want to hear what happened to my wife we get on the plane and she's got her headphones in right and we're just about to take off and she take i i lean back and i say something to her so she takes her headphones off and the plane takes off and she drops her headphones you know the and she couldn't find them the rest of the flight so it was like eight oh, hours fucked. And she had no headphones. She couldn't listen. <laughs> she couldn't they give you? Couldn't they give you a set of headphones? Well, they could, but it only worked for the that that system. But she had all her movies on her oh. iPad and everything. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she was yeah. like, I That's... couldn't watch any of the or listen to her music or anything. She had to just watch the. the that screen. sucks. Yeah, so I was like, oh. and then she found them when she got. No, out. no, we couldn't find them at all. Oh, they're gone. They just like yeah. disappeared. They're just like rolled somewhere down the plane and just gone. Ah, fuck. That sucks. Um, yeah, that definitely. Sucks. Uh, that totally Todd, Todd Pavalaitis, thanks for the super chat, but I don't see your question. Um, maybe I met, no, I don't see it. Man. I don't see, I don't think there is one, Mark. I think yeah. it's just Todd. If you uh have a question, let us know, man. If, otherwise, if you just want to give us money, we appreciate that too. We'll take it. Um, no, serious, if you have a question, let us know uh hey guys any reason why the multi-tap main selector like on the back of old marshalls isn't a thing anymore <laughs> cheers isn't doesn't it still exist on reissue the reissues have them yeah Eight, 800s reissues. and yeah but they are dan they're dangerous i repaired uh mid 80s it was a 2205 dave so mm -hmm. the old split channel right it's 86 i think because the guy had reached over in the dark, thought that he was impedance selector. the impedance selector, <laughs> moved it to 110. So 240 here, obviously. Uh, right? So ran 240 volts with the thing set on 120. It made a really loud noise, apparently, and then stopped working. <laughs> so, uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's dangerous. It's not, yeah, it's not, the, not the greatest thing to have. I think I had this one. I had this one tech that, um, or store tech or something. So we sent him, it was for a, um, JJ Jr. run 20 or something. We sent him a set of tubes. And so my customer service guy wrote me back with a, this email from the guy where we sent him the set of tubes. And, uh, yeah, he said, he said, he put the set of tubes in the, the amp. And then he saw a puff of smoke happen, and and immediately when he said that, I wrote back, that's because you put the EL84s in the preamp tube sockets and the preamp tubes in the EL84 sockets, and you effectively blew up the amplifier. Oh, my God. No. So, so on the... What? Yes, this happens. I've never heard of any. I've never heard of this before. This, this happens routinely. So, well, they're all nine. <laughs> this pins. happens routinely. Yeah, the, yeah, the same they're socket, all nine right? pockets, right? Yeah. So on on all the runs, the JJ, uh, the the JEL, all of them, right? So there's two preamp tubes near the input that's that's together, and then there's three preamp tubes, the same socket looking things, near. Uh, the output transformer, which is the phase inverter and the two power tubes, right? Yeah. So routinely, I've had people put the EL84s in the two uh, sockets that are separated because, well, they're two sockets separated without ever, like, this amp had tubes in it originally. You would think they put it back in the spots where the tubes were. Of course. And um, no. And there's no labeling on the sockets. Okay, you know, granted. Okay. But, yeah. So what happens is there's a elevated uh, 
filament voltage capacitor, you know, elevated filament voltage in that amp, and mm -hmm. that capacitor just blows up. Just oozes goop all over the board. And yeah, and when a cap like that goes, it, yeah. a lot of smoke comes out. Yeah, yeah, and some smoke comes out. It's not, it's not like really horrendous, but it, yeah. it's some. And you, don't want to let the smoke um, you know, it's just like, well, you blew up the amp, so you have to replace the capacitor now. Clean all the gook off the board, and put the tubes back in. It'll operate fine because I know it won't, didn't do anything else. I've I've had this happen before, <laughs> many times actually. Oh, wow. Man. Yeah. Well, now this was a tech. I was kind of wow. I was kind of questioning this. Yeah. So. Absolutely. I'm like, well, you blew it up. <laughs> Holy crap. It would have worked just fine if you would have just replaced the tubes properly and then it would have been just fine. But nope. Now you caused yourself some more grief. I did pick up a George Lynch Tiger guitar. It's uh it's a homemade uh parts from the neck is from uh oh shit. I can't think of the name of the part company. Uh yeah, and then the body I got from a local guy who painted it for me. So it sounds great. Um, Mark, so there is a uh, Todd who had the $10 super chat. I don't know if you've seen that. He, he did have a question. He's saying uh, just below the super chat. Yeah. I'm sure why people don't type it into this question should be just below the super chat. Well, had too well, many characters and didn't post. Okay. No, it's not. I mean, it's not. Um, Todd Pavelitis, you're, you're it's not there, man. Yeah, we see your super chat in our list here, and there's nothing from you below that until you just typed. Yeah, so just type, uh, retype your question in, man. Retype it again to us right now. We'll watch for it right now. We'll we'll take care of you. Yep. Just let me know. Sorry, I missed it. Uh, I just don't see it. Uh, it's not here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why they can't like when you do the super chat. There's a spot for the type. You just goes in and sends yeah it, it's a little confusing if you haven't done it before um let's see and thanks well i appreciate that i am pretty good about these things <laughs> we try i, I stay on but, top but of it thanks for letting us know if we didn't you know it's, it's fine. Uh, and if that ever happens and you need this question answered feel free to email us after the fact and we'll answer it for you because we don't want any super chat unanswered. Absolutely not. If I ever miss one, you let me know. Um, here's Todd. Hey, Dave, did this once. Guitar equals greater than high JMP 21, 2204 number one. You guys read this. because I. Okay. Guitar into the high of the JMP 2204, then into a Schultz power soak line to the low input of a jmp 2204 sound was huge at a stringy hard and stringy how much input is too much input for the front end of 2204 uh, i mean at some point it just sounds like shit so uh you know um i don't think you're gonna hurt anything by even blister well speaker level would be probably too much for the 2204 yeah. you don't want to put a speaker cable into the front of a 22204 but um other than that i mean the line out uh, i mean the low the low i mean okay. we talked about this when lyle was on the stream two days ago that the the low input on a 2204 is a bit a bit weird isn't it it's like straight into that cold clipper it's weird, but it's it's well, you can look at it this way. It's like you had multiple gain stages before the cold cold clipper stage. Um yeah. that works, really, if you think about yeah. it. You know, it's just like you modified an amp before you got into the amp. But yeah, it's an so extra it's cold stage. Yeah. 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 No worries, Lyle. I'm so used to pe people spelling my name with a K. It does I don't even look at it anymore. <laughs> like i literally just don't, like it, it does i just don't even it doesn't even register with me um 
and this is funny. Should the next Tone Talk signature product be stickers to properly label 12 AX7 <laughs> and ELC? So it could be, yes. Could be, yes. <laughs> could be. If it wasn't uh, such a pain in the ass to fucking screen the top of a chassis, I would. I mean, technically it could be done, but that means like it's a zinc plated chassis and we'd have to, I'm not going to do that. Don't be dumb. If the tubes are in one socket, put the same tubes back in that same socket. Yeah, um, I've, I've never. Yeah. Dave thoughts on your Lee Jackson mods. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is not really. I've never found one that I've really said I have to have it. Wasn't your favorite? Never my favorite. They always find them kind of be a little weird. Have you ever played much of those? No. Jason? No. And I, it's because it was, you know, I mean, a lot of respect for, you know, the history and what, and yeah. what Lee and what Lee did and all that stuff. But it was never a tone that I went, Oh, I've got to find out, you know, what makes yeah, that how to do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, his later stuff he did with Ampeg actually was better because uh, that's when the architecture of the mod changed. Right. And then it was more of a traditional um, gain stage in front of a, you know, like a 2203 kind of thing. Yeah. 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 I mean, from to my year, that was the best of the bunch that I tried. I tried the Lee Jackson. Yeah. The other, the other early mods were a little weird. The metal, I may try the Metaltronics one, and they sounded thin, not a lot of bass at all. Um, but then this one, I like in like soloed out, like just I was listening to it, I was like, oh, it sounds great. But then I got it home and kind of compared it to other amps, and I'm like, yeah, it does have kind of a weird thing going on. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'll send it to you, Dave. Uh, Dale, <laughs> uh, <It> doing. <laughs> Yeah, FedEx. Doing a wet dry rig with Freeman twin sister combo as dry and a bad cat hot cat 30 combo for wet. Any tips on setting up a wet dry rig? Uh well. Are you gonna have your effects a hundred percent wet or are you gonna have dry in the hot cat also? And are you using the hot cat? Does that have an effects loop return? Yeah. And what are you using to make it wet? Are you using what delay are you using or stuff? There's there's questions that need to be answered to to, need to answer understand this further. How, yeah. How how are you hooking it up? Because then yeah. those bad those those hot cat thirties can they got a ton of gain if you if you want to. Yeah. I mean, I I would think you're trying to do. I, I don't know how you're trying to do it. So are you putting like taking the sand of the effects loop and feeding? Yeah, have I don't got, know. Do I would need more loop, info. Do they have a loop as standard, Dave? The hot I have thing? no idea. You know, because Charles Cilia, who I know you know, yeah. has got a couple of those. And I, I put a loop in one of them because it didn't have it. But this was, uh, I think these are Mark Sampson era. Uh, yeah, pre, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. Um, send me an email. I can help you with that because I need more info. Hey guys, I don't. I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to wrap up in a few minutes. Yeah, sure. Okay, it's been a long day. Um, Forty grit. Thanks for the super chat, Dave. Any news on the possible Demartini head? Nice shirt, Mark. Oh, thanks, man. I'm repping for Van Halen today. I have no news. I'm sorry to say, I have no news at all. Okay. Uh, Stormlight Architect, thanks for the super chat. Bought Sin One B E Deluxe. Uh, Tweed Deluxe Ubershaw. Yeah. Is Tweed? What is that? Tweed Deluxe. Yes, that's yeah. a Tweed Deluxe. Okay. Yeah. Tweed Deluxe know. Ubershaw. Never realized how much the power amp on my 5153 is Mark V or Origin of 50 effects the tone via effects return. Oh, yeah, man. Huge. Huge big differences. Yeah. No. Between all those, for sure. So the big power amp differences in tone. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it, it's... 
Well, that's kind of the fun thing too about the Sin One or something, you know, because you can you can put in different power amps and get different tonalities and different sounds out of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some might sound like shit. Some might sound great. Some might be somewhere in between the two, and you know. Uh, Kale Joe, hey Dave, in the photos of EVH's rig in the live without a net era, he looks like to be plugged into the top input of the second channel on his Plexi. Did he start plugging into the channel two in that era? No. Don't believe so. That would be the he would plug into channel one bright channel. Yeah, he would be going um, into the normal channel, All right? Would he? Yeah. I would have to see what picture you're talking about. Mm. Unless unless that amp was modded in some way, Dave. And that it wasn't. No. They were all stock. I've been I've been like literally in half of those amps. And, and, and they, were, they were all stock super leads. They were a stock super lead with a variac bias to whatever at the time. I'm not sure. But they uh, weren't were they configured as a like 12 series style filtering, or they were just as no. they came. Yeah. They, they were, were just, just as they came. Them. JMP <laughs> four input stock filtering into a resistive load, 16 ohm, amp set on eight. And then a line out taken from that resistive load that fed the Bradshaw effects rack and then into an H and H power. That was that rig. Nothing more. Okay. All right. Well, I think we've gone through all the super chats and uh, I'm going to call it a night. I'm getting tired. Um, Jason, thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for the... Uh the invite always happy to jump in yeah no, no fun. problem you're always welcome um, <laughs> Thanks, man. our next show is uh the 20th am i right the 20th uh, i think yes october 20th with greg fiddleman 8 p.m oh, cool. greg fiddleman metallica producer engineer and many other bands look at the thing uh be audio, good one. audio slave and uh, um, I can't remember everything that was in. <laughs> yeah, me either. Look, look at our nice thumbnail. That yeah, Mario got... did. Thank you, Mario. And uh, it'll tell you all all his credits. He's been yeah. around a long time. Greg's a cool guy. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, and then we'll get things scheduled for next month. We'll get Justin Hawkins working on it. You know, and we'll. Think yeah, there's a, a whole bunch of other ones we're working on. <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got a list, so we're working on it. Um, I know uh, Adam Nolly. I reached out to him to see if he wants to come on, um, and some other people. So we'll keep you guys posted. Follow us on the social medias. Uh, I sound like an old man. Follow us on the social medias. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you when you when you put the S on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, yeah. You really aged yourself there. I know. <laughs> Only on Facebook. That adds that adds 10 years for sure. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for That's sure. Uh yes. Yeah, so, all right. So make sure you guys press the subscribe and click the bell. Uh check out Sweetwater and check out fixpedalboards.com and Tomon. All right. And excellent. Uh, all right. Thanks, guys, for joining. Jason, hang on while we say goodbye. Have a great weekend, everybody. All right. See you. See you, guys.